Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pass the Barb. Today is Monday, October 2nd. I am your host, Adam Bartusik, and it's good to be back. It is the fall. It doesn't feel like it, really. But uh, I am joined by my good friend, Mr. Ryan Pinkala. Yeah, I hope everybody out there is killing it today. Uh, just make sure if you're listening to this right now, rate and subscribe past the barb right now. If you're listening to it, just click into it, do it quick. Once we get to 100 rate and subscribes, we're doing a pretty sick giveaway. So everyone should get in on that. Uh, all you got to do is rate, uh, give us a little comment on there and get yourself in there. I actually don't think we're that far away, too. I haven't checked it. Lately, yeah, I think we're getting close. Episodes there's, there's are growing a- fast. We got we got a lot happening here on the past the barb side of things. Yeah, I, I mean, we're the number one outdoor podcast in the world. What do you expect? We it's just need everybody really. who listens, everybody who listens to go rate it. And uh, of course, joined by the one and only Mr. Sam Sobey. Howdy, 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 howdy. Happy October to each and every one of you. And like Adam said, uh, a huge thank you for making us the number one outdoor podcast in the world. We cannot thank you enough. Uh, it's been a roller coaster of a ride. We've had amazing guests come on and we've got a whole docket of folks coming up down the road here so it's going to be a great fall we've got everything to talk about between hunting fishing and you know everything else in between so take it away fellas yeah this should be good and uh it's not just us three this time we got we got for the first time i think since soby's been here we are joined once again by our boy good lord captain bill in the flesh gentlemen i'm back (laughs) <laughs> look what the river washed up on the shore <laughs> unbelievable here's hey cheers to you guys first of all i hope i hope we're all drinking i hope you can hear me i might have to get it closer to me no you're good you're good um it's good to be back i think the yeah the last time i was on here was before i went to alaska and since then it has been a a real whirlwind in in my world but i'm back and i'm excited to chat with you guys for a for a little bit tonight anyway as long as i can um as long as my phone doesn't die but yeah good to be back i'm not in alaska i'm in montana now but i love it i love it so parked up on the hill the mountains are blue unreal oh god yeah this is i mean this is hitting the spot yeah i'm parked i'm in craig right now i'm parked (laughs) i'm poaching wi-fi off of this house that i had the wi-fi password for so i'm parked sort of in front of it but it's good wi-fi and it's working so we're just gonna stay parked here And if anybody if anybody tells me to leave, I'm not fucking leaving. So that this is great. I love it. So Bill, what catch us up to speed? What is for people who are new to the podcast, like Bill, you've been gone since we have grown like a ton. Yeah. So uh for people who don't know you, this is Will Stolsky out in Montana, guiding steelhead, and then uh went up to salmon doing some guiding as well. <laughs> Trout, like, trout, in Mon- trout in Montana, uh, yeah, salmon in Alaska, steelhead in Idaho, which will be coming in a couple months. But, um, yeah, yeah. So I was in, I was in Alaska all August, and that was freaking awesome. Some of the best fishing I've ever had up there. And then got back to Montana at the beginning of September, and then quickly rolled that into this was day uh, thirty-one in a row. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So really yeah, just uh, it. really, yeah, I really have been grinding my dick off, but, uh, it's been good. I mean, fishing has been good today. It was really good. So, you know, some days are good. Some days aren't as good, but yeah, I've got f- four more trips this week and then I'm taking next weekend off and I'm going antelope hunting Mo- Montana rifle antelope opener is next Beauty. weekend. So I got a tag in my pocket. I'm ready to spill some blood. So, yeah. Will is like that cool uncle that you like really, really hope comes to Thanksgiving. And then when he shows up, you're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you like want to give him a hug, but you, you don't want to well, like uh, spook him. So you're just like. <laughs> yeah, I, if, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm well, a little I, shocked. I don't want to get too shocked. shocked. I don't want to get too ahead of anything here, but uh, since you left, things have gone pretty well and. I don't know if there's a correlation there, but uh, we're going to see how things go here with you back. Well, that's just it. I mean, I sort of kept tabs on everything, of course. And when I left, I mean, you know, the podcast really gained a lot of exposure. So I might just, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just need to show up once every couple months, make sure things are going good still. Um, Because, yeah, you guys are killing it. I mean, it's been uh, it's been awesome. I listened to the Peric episode. That was really good. And uh, a couple other ones. But, yeah, man, you guys have been rocking it. So. 
It was disappointing not having you there for the Parrick one because you were involved in so many various travels and stories with that. Oh, so many shenanigans, you know. I wish that I was I was bummed that I couldn't make it for that. But yeah, um, a little. I guess we'll just I'll run through a quick little update of what's been going on in my world. Obviously, working and fishing a lot, but I am waging a war. So for the listeners that we're here prior to my departure and knew of me i live in the barn you guys know about the barn of course yeah yeah we heard about the barn the yeah. barn and i have been waging a war since i've returned from alaska with the mice in the barn i have a serious serious mouse problem at the barn who'd have thought you know fucking barn <laughs> oh boy <laughs> but i never noticed it until i came back from alaska because it started getting cold that night so they were seeking shelter and warmth but I mean, I'm killing, I am absolutely marauding these things. I'm mauling them. I, and I'll What's, tell you guys the, the, the ticket, the key. Um, if anybody out there has a mouse problem, maybe you guys do too. So, and a client actually told me this, but the sticky traps. Now, if you ever oh. seen the sticky traps, they are not, it, it's not a humane way for the mice to die. They die a really slow, and painful death. On the, I mean, they gnaw off their own legs, those fuckers. But you put the sticky trap out. And I use a combination of peanut butter and Cheetos. They love Cheetos. I don't know why, but they love it. And they will literally crawl over the dead ones to get to the bait. And then they get stuck too. So, yeah, I've murked two or three at a time in the sticky traps. It's been extremely productive. So that's what, that's what my brother Daniel did when we were in Lakeville. Yeah. All the time I'd walk outside and there'd be one sitting there and I'd look at them. I'm like, not my problem. And I just keep walking by. Oh, because they're still alive. I mean, I oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> One time as an experiment, I left them for like, you know, so, over t- 24 hours. They don't die. They still live. So, you know, but <laughs> so what, what is your favorite uh, means of dispatch at this moment? What I do is I, <laughs> I, I put them in a plastic, plastic bag you get from the grocery store and then I just seal it down <laughs> tight and I fucking suffocate them to death. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. That ex- will do it. It's <laughs> extremely effective. And I tell you guys what, I also have out the Victor traps, you know, the classic snap snap traps, you know, and I'll wake up in the middle of the night to the sound of one of those traps going off. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, like Christmas morning for me. I mean, I, I take so much pleasure in knowing that when I hear that snap that I just got another. So, you know, it's a war, of course, a war of attrition and I'm still, I'm still in it, but, um, Little by little, we're doing doing some damage on the population at the barn. So, Stolsky, if you want another method, Daniel's favorite was he just took a bucket and he just flip it over and chuck it in there. So I've heard, with water I've heard, in it, obviously, but yeah, I've heard that works pretty. Oh, for dispatching. Yeah, yeah, for just kind of <laughs> ending it. Well, my <laughs> so I was talking to my uh, my buddy Chase who lives underneath me in the barn. You know, the barn has a underneath. There's what the barn has a guest room. Well, not really a, a guest room, but basically they turn the bottom part. It into just has room. more barn. Just more barn. It's way bigger than my shit. But anyways, Chase, we're both dealing with the mice. And, and he, when he gets one in the sticky, he takes them out back and then he chops their heads off with an axe. Really? <laughs> I mean, boys, it's October in Craig, Montana. Things are getting pretty sadistic out there. Let's just say that. I mean... <laughs> I, I am, yeah, I'm in a killing, killing mode right now. And coming from, also coming from, you know, New Shigak River, Alaska to here. I mean, I, I don't know when the last time I saw a woman, um, well, I see them, but that's about it. I mean, let's just, it, it, it's time to get out. I need, I need a vacation. <laughs> so just kind of needs a vacation. Yeah. Parlaying that, like, um. I mice. fear I fear for the ne- for the first antelope you see. Oh fuck. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Better not be a doe, that's all I'm saying. So so the mice, they can't get enough of the peanut butters and Cheetos, but what I want to know is coming back from Alaska, what can't you get enough of that you couldn't get a hold of up there? Whether that be, you know, Coors lights or maybe some delicious chew or or a, a cold mountain dew. Yeah. Oh man. Mountain Dew for sure. And I've actually been on a diet Coke kick now lately. <laughs> I've been on the DCs heavy, but the one thing that I really miss when I'm in Alaska is pizza. Oh pizza. yeah. Not, not even, not, not even good pizza. Like a, I'm, I'm talking like a fro, like a tombstone. I don't care, but I, I don't get it at all when I'm up there. So I think about pizza constantly. That was the first thing I ate when I got home was pizza. It was awesome. 
Hmm. Damn. So yep. any any killer guide stories from up there? You need to, one you want to unleash, or just you're back to hang out with the boys, and we'll just keep rolling. Get um, one off your chest. Get just one dirty one off your chest. Oh man, um, I'm trying to think here. You know, in a lot, I didn't really have any like really really crazy. Well, yeah, actually, I did. Um, and and I'm gonna air these guys out a little bit. Um, don't cut this and post it as a clip because they might see it, Bart. But they won't. I don't really care. You don't Fuck have to guys. use names. <laughs> so I I had this this crew, these four dudes that I fished up there. I guided them for two days, and we had the best two days of silver salmon fishing that a human could possibly ever have. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Where where it was it was every cast. You know, doubles, triples, legitimate quadruples. I had four guys. I mean, we had quads going. And we found this new spot. So, I mean, we had caught so many fish in the morning that I was like, let's go up river. And I went and fished stuff I'd never even seen or been to. We pulled into the spot. And it was kind of like the side channel that came into the main river. And I first when I fished, I fished the point that kind of stuck out, gravel bar out from the side channel and caught a, a few on top of that. But I'm looking into the side channel and you know, I'm like peering into it and I can see fish rolling back there, but not only are, they're not only rolling. I mean, they're jumping clear out of the water and they are, I mean, loaded when these silvers get potted up like that, they get kind of stuck. They don't, they can't figure out which way to go. I mean, they just get stuck in a spot like that. So I said, guys, I said, let's motor up on in the side channel. So let's see what happens. We pulled into that side channel. There must've been probably 1500 fish in a 50 yard square. I mean, it was, wow. they were ever, so, I mean, needless to say, we just knocked the living shit out of them. I mean, over and over again. So then when it came for them to leave, it's sort of customary that the clients will tip you at the end of their stay. Those motherfuckers, they tip me for two of the best days of fishing they ever had in their whole life. And they also fished two days with two other guys. So six days total. And everybody had a similar experience. We just wrecked them. The river was loaded. They gave me $170. That was it. I mean, that's, that's by Alaska standards. That's horrific. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't be complaining, you know, but it was awful. And, uh, the one guy gave me the money and I thought it was just for him. And I thought, well, that's, that's pretty good for one guy. You know, I'm waiting on the other three to pay up. They get on the float plane and leave. And then I asked all the other guys, I said, okay, did you, what did you guys get? They all got the same. I mean, 150 bucks, 160. I'm like, that's terrible. So I went to my boss, Pete up there and we all told him. So those guys, they will never be allowed back to the lodge again. They have been placed <laughs> on the blacklist. Blacklist. <laughs> So that's a lesson for those that go on oh some sort God. of guided adventure. Tip well, because you may get you may get blacklisted. Those guys got blacklisted. They thought they were coming back for sure. Like, see you next year, you know? Nope. No, you're not. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what 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 is the customary? What is the appropriate tip for someone who goes to Alaska? Well, well, I mean, it's it's so subjective, but I would say I I think a good custom is a hundred dollars per person per day. So if there's two of you in the boat, tip your guide 200 bucks. If there's four of you, 400. I think that just a hundred dollars per person per day, that's, that's kind of the standard. I mean, some people do more, some people do a little less, you know, and that's totally fine. But that I think is sort of the, the standard, you know, a hundred bucks per person per day. So. Gotcha. That's good. Makes yeah. sense. I like it. I mean, the one thing that pissed me off about those guys is they bragged about how much money they made. You know, they're oh. I, like, oh. you know, I mean, they were just they were just killing it. You know, and I'm like, well, I'm not okay. I <laughs> I, I live in a barn. You know, like, can you help a brother out? But so, I mean, that was the only like really negative aspect of my entire time up there. Um, but it was good, man. I mean, the fishing was just, it was really awesome. So, but it's nice to be back in Montana and it's good to see you boys. So we'll, we can be done talking about me. Let's move on. No, that's good. Good to catch up with you, Bill. I'm sure we'll get more from you. So what have you been up to lately? Man, dude, just fishing, 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 fishing. And it's been warm as hell here. We're kind of like everyone in the upper Midwest is kind of trying to transition over to hunting season and bow hunting, but it's been like 86 degrees every day so it's been like one of the warmest falls and it's been kind of a drought but yeah i'm just i'm really excited to get in the bow stand i've been moving a lot of stands and cameras around so i'm just i'm just giddy i'm giddy to get hunting i like it pink how about you uh dude uh, i've been doing a little bit of duck banging not gonna lie 
got out uh opener in minnesota was just over the weekend and i only hunted saturday because it was an absolute war zone in the metro but it uh it went pretty good so ended up shooting i think seven opening day for two guys but um yeah the spot we went to i'll just give people a breakdown because this is how like kind of the metro sets up for duck opener is uh especially this year with it being drought there is like barely any water around and all the ducks are like hyper concentrated on everything that there is water on and uh so we scouted we had one little pond that we were going to go to we showed up we got there at 4 a.m and there was 12 trucks there uh realistically it's a spot that probably could have like four groups on it and uh we talked to some guys that had actually camped out in the marsh since 11 the night before and uh yeah it was uh it got pretty hairy right after opening i think i heard about six cases of shells go off on this pond in like the first hour but it was a good time i mean it was funny to kind of watch it all unfold because there were so many freaking ducks getting rained out of this place but yeah, everything was flying for its life. So been doing a little bit of duck hunting, um, getting ready for a trip this weekend to North Dakota, going to out there for like four days, basically to go shoot some waterfowl and stuff. And then we're, we're into this big swing of things for, uh, for the fall here. I got a bunch of trips lined up, so I'm looking forward to that. Well, sick. No, that's awesome. Pink, uh, pink. You are also delayed by like four seconds probably. So if you want to leave and like restart your browser and come back, that'd probably be, be a good call. But, uh, yeah. So on my end, Stolsky, you'll get a uh, kick out of this actually. So, um, I have not been fishing or doing anything outdoors lately. Basically the only thing I've done is, uh, me and Alyssa have had a few weddings. So I've been going to weddings and I just have, I have like one that. note in my phone that uh i was like oh i have to like it was happening and i was like this is way too good not to bring up in the podcast so i i had wrote it down immediately so we're at this wedding for um some of Alyssa's friends and it, it was awesome wedding and they're great people had had a ton of fun there and you know it's probably like 10 10 30 people are pretty liquored up and um you know everybody's dancing having having all their drinks whatever the the good old free kegs are starting to run out you're like okay we're having a great time and uh I'm heading over to the bathroom and uh, going to the bathroom, you know, relieving myself in the in the good old urinal. And uh, so I get in there and I'm like getting ready to leave, go to leave. And this, these two really drunk guys come in. They're like young 20s, I would say. They, they had to be like they were definitely younger than me. Um, so they go in there and one of the guys just goes up to this urinal and I quote just, dude this zin pouch in the urinal is brown something's wrong with it and i was like what the fuck and i go back and i'm like talking to Alyssa's uh dad and he's like yeah and he like throws in a grizzly wintergreen pouch and i'm like oh my god oh they've never they've, even seen one they've, they've never even seen what it could like a regular wow. chew pouch they just thought a zin pouch there was something wrong with oh my it God. E, e boys <laughs> and, and, was, and and i told i told jeff i was like did you by chance throw one of those in the urinal he's like yeah i'm like oh my god this totally makes sense now before yeah before zins it was yeah grizzly wintergreen pouches and copenhagen pouches there was no there was no zins when we were well i don't know i guess when they came out but i in like high school there was no zins you know you no. chewed like a man freezer tarps has taken over the world dude that guy is unbelievable we got to get him on the pod Fuck. we do got to get him on the pod he's a minnesota <laughs> homie is yeah he actually? yeah oh yeah where does he go to yeah. college Chetty? I, I think he went to Mankato. <laughs> no way. He did. Yeah, dude. I think. I don't know that for sure. We got to get Chad. Yeah, we we'll got to get Chetty on the pod. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fucking huge, actually. He's massive. That would be insane. But that yeah, is, no, that anyways, is a funny that, story, though, Adam. That, just that to be quote, like, never even seen one. <laughs> yeah, that quote just rained in my head, and all of a sudden I was like, fuck, like, am I, like, old now? <laughs> Like, Adam, you that, witnessed a, a generational gap. That was, I know, I mean, like a big like, time generational gap. Yeah, dude, exactly. this Zin pouch in the urinal is brown. I, I'm like, <laughs> you mean a chew, chew pouch? That is a chew. I mean, that's it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just Those picturing young... the last gap, like an old man <laughs> and a young kid going up. This phone's buttons, they spin. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sitting there like, 
No. <laughs> Fuming. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I experienced a generational gap. Other than that, I uh, haven't really had much going on. Tomorrow, head down to the river for the last derby of the year, the good old St. Jude. Pangers currently driving up here from Oklahoma. <laughs> Um, so yeah, head down to Wabasha, enjoy some fall fishing on the good old Mississippi River, and hopefully it goes well. Excellent. You should have gone to lacrosse this last weekend, Sobe. You know it was Oktoberfest. <laughs> I was just, I was just gonna kind of bring that into some current events, like you know, with with wedding and party season being about, and fall is in the air. Last weekend was Oktoberfest, and I had no idea. And then one of my buddies, little brother Cole Pence, little yeah. brother. Um, actually he's a senior there now. And he was like, you know, giving it the onions at Oktoberfest. And I was like, Oh no way. That's this weekend. And it just, yeah, it just brings back good memories of being down there with Will being super hydrated and, and having a hell of a time. Like just so tell, us, tell us, tell us an Oktoberfest story, Will. Well, who was For it? those who don't know what is Oktoberfest, Will. Yeah. Oktoberfest obviously is celebrated worldwide worldwide but we are referencing a local community of lacrosse wisconsin i mean it is the three days in lacrosse i mean the entire year in lacrosse revolves around oktoberfest it's but i mean it's basically consists of before oktoberfest and after oktoberfest that's it i mean the whole town is just built on it but yeah i mean it's just three days of celebration you know pros drinking a lot and stuff but Sobe came down i think two or three different times when i was in school sam does that sound right i've never been back since but i think yeah i made the voyage three different times cool yeah. and i we were we were stevens point natives at the time and it was a short hour and a half drive and and we always went down there with zero plan zero <laughs> idea where we were going to stay or sleep or what we were going to eat but it was we made it out every time and it was the things you would see, the people you would interact with, it was just an experience. It was euphoric. It, yeah, it's absolutely otherworldly. I mean, the, I had one pop up on my phone, I think, this weekend or whatever. It was I think you're in the picture, Sam. It's like me, you. I, I can't remember who's all in it, but remember that group of, of moms that we met down there in the the leader hosens? You remember them? <laughs> yeah. What was your one roommate? He And he was really... That was his thing. He was really about the moms, and he was like, "Oh, he was so he was so serious about it." I mean, he yeah. this was the if all end all. I think it was my buddy. My, well, was it Anthony? Was it Tuan? It might have been him, or can't remember. But that one popped up. But then there was another story, Sam, that I don't think I was present for. Didn't Pint get? Didn't he get punched in the face? <sighs> it seems like it would be memorable. Or no, you, no, that was me. That was yeah. <laughs> I I wish it was Ben. I really do. I, I don't know. Well, I don't know, man. It was like one of those nights, Cole Pin. We had always, you know, I, I was 21. I think Stolsky was 21 for some duration of it. And it was just, I don't know, crazy things would happen. We, you know, Cole Pint and a lot of my other buddies, you know, were a little um underage so for them to get into bars they would have to sneak in with their fakes and we were just in and out of of bars and and doing the whole gig you know between house parties to bars to the strip to Polito's getting a slice of pizza and i just you know i I would be around will and all his buddies who i you know had then made my friends of my own you know friend of my friend is my friend right and and at some points in the night i'd be around you know 20 dudes good kinship good fun fully hydrated having a great time and then next thing i know i'm like walking home by myself dude in the middle of nowhere back to one of my buddy's houses that like went to school there and i was like you know how did this happen man i was just around everyone and i'm like by myself and uh, this is how i remember it (laughs) some of these well, I mean, and I was young too. I mean, I was probably only like 21, 22, but some of these young cats come ripping by me and they just roll up to these girls right in front of me and they just windmill ass slap them. And I said something chirping the guys like that was just whatever. You know what I mean? And this dude turns around and charges me and just rips me one right in the face. <laughs> and I'm like, and, I, and I'm pissed. They, and it was one of those, he rips me in the face and he just books him and his friend are laughing. And I was like, no way. And I'm like looking around, you know, like for my boys, which I had already previously figured out. I was by myself. And I'm, just, I'm just alone. And I'm like, oh, that son of a bitch. And they're running so fast, dude. And I was not at a point where I could probably do any 
heavy sprinting. So I just, <laughs> I just, I just, I just like mended this nose. And I just like proceeded to stumble around for like what seemed like an eternity until I found my buddy's house. I just was black and blue. I was sucker punched, dude. I was sucker punched, and I, and I really was doing a good deed, standing up for this gal, being like, "Hey." <laughs> right you were you were looking out for them yeah. and you, yeah you were yeah that was these, that's bullshit these fellas were quick they were so quick i tell you that you seen bolt son of a gun freshman that just had a hell of a left hook and i wore it but i was i was I had no pain but i was like shook i was like oh my god I that is oh i just think of god what's that what's that movie quote i just wish honor was here right now the, he's so fast, he's so fast. fast. The, i was like oh god yeah. look at him from, go uh, uh, someone's gonna rip me apart for it but it's from uh it's from some will ferrell movie i believe well we'll uh, just hang out to dry on that one let the yeah. fans tear you apart no it's fine <laughs> honor would have my back on it he would oh. he'd probably be thinking of the exact same thing that's uh, no, that's that's good, Sobe. That's There's... so funny, Sobe, because I think we've all I mean, everybody has been in that situation where like you're out drinking with your buddies and then all of a sudden you're by yourself and you don't know how yeah. it happened. You're alone. <laughs> I mean, you are alone. There's yeah. no nobody around. One, and one like, flip flop on, you're like, bro. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, what? <laughs> what, uh, what? What happened the last hour? How am I by myself? And then you have to, then you have to fend for yourself and get home. I mean, it's a testament of wills at that point, you know. And, and that was also back during, you know. I mean, this wasn't a crazy long time ago, but I, I want to say this is like iPhone two, three, four era where the yeah. batteries were not great. So like, always come around midnight or one, it was just iPhone. Oh, your phone was dead. Everyone's was, was dead. Yeah. Yeah. And we, it was we, guaranteed. Yeah. We had to follow the stars. You did. Yeah. I mean, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was the trail of tears for sure. I mean, you had to make it home. There was no choice, you know? Oh, no, man. <laughs> that's good. That's a good memory. Well, we are going to move on to our next segment. I think, I think Bill will be pumped about this one too. If, uh, if there he is. Okay. Yeah. We can bring him in. So we're bringing back a segment for the people. It hasn't hasn't been back since the winter last year, and it's brought some classics to this podcast and some drama and some drama. No, so there's now, been some scorekeeping clerical issues, but we will go ahead. But we are bringing back our boy Hazer Hayes Baldwin. How's it going? Let's Hazer? give him a round of applause. Let's give him a round of applause. Hey. 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 Yep. Yep. And Hazer wow. is here for some trivia with Hayes, gentlemen. Brother. I have to, I have to jump in here. I have to jump in here. I have to jump in here. The, this is incredible. We, you got Hayes Baldwin and you got Captain Bill, Will Stolsky on the same pod together. And I need to just air this out. These two right here, a hundred percent were some inspiration for the beginning of this whole podcast, because these fellas would do trivia on Instagram live and just the banter and the chatter that would happen back in the day from these guys going at it and just, just the shenanigans. It, I think it inspired podcasters around the world. You could ask Rogan himself. I swear to God, he's seen <laughs> Trivia Tuesday with Stolsky. Oh, I Hayes. agree. I agree. He certainly was a viewer, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. this, that was this. This whole segment basically came from COVID, right? You yeah, guys got, were just it, super it, bored. It got the country through COVID. Wouldn't you agree, Hazer? I mean, we sort of were able to get people through that horrible time. Of course, I and mean, it was a, a a journey. I think we did. Oh, probably six or ten of them. I don't even know. It was we like, gave out. We had prizes. We had guys. We had custom prizes. Yeah, yeah. Going up to S and W and and get sweatshirts, and we were sending them off uh, <laughs> for Nikki Duds. Nikki Duds got the sweatshirt. Nikki Duds. I mean, we would have 50, 70, 80 people in there just going at it. You know, <laughs> it was wild times. I hate to interject, but I I would like to say that I think there were some scorekeeping issues with that segment as well. Oh yeah, um, and I may or may well, not there was part yeah, of. There was always a debate, you know. I mean, because it was whatever showed up first on the feed, you know. And there was always, yeah. And, and I, <laughs> so, I, I would like, I'd like Captain Will to take this away. It just for the viewers out there who have maybe never met our good pal Hayes Baldwin Hazer. Just give give the viewers a quick elevator speech, who he is, just as if you were to set him up with a beautiful single mom you saw walk into the elevator seconds ago. <laughs> Hayes Baldwin is is unlike any other fisherman woman to walk this earth he has a deep affinity for gull lake and for those that are from minnesota i mean gull lake gull hayes knows gull lake probably better than 
No, well, I would say the vast majority of people alive. I mean, there's a few, but Hayes is embodies Gull Lake. He embodies the Brainerd Lakes area. Now, this summer he was on Vermilion, crushed that too. But uh, Hayes is a guy. I mean, if you want to catch fish and you're willing to put in the work, I mean, you want Hayes in the boat with you. I think I've caught more fish with Hayes than anybody else alive, you know. And on top of that, a guy you want at the bar with you as well, you know. I mean, you, yeah. you need him on the bar stool next to you. You need him on the tiller handle next to you, you know. I mean, he's that kind of guy. So, oh, absolutely, God. I love God. it, brother. God bless. We we'll make Hayes blush. <laughs> and a man of the go- and a man of the gospel as well. So, hundred percent, yeah. Right, one of the here. Yep, exactly. You know, right. do it for do it for Ron. You know. All well. right, Hazer, you want to fill the listeners in? How are we going to attack this? What's our What's our trivia tonight? How are we going to do this? What do you got prepped for the people? We got ten questions. Uh, ten questions. And uh, got one- Jesus, Bill, what is going on over there? He's getting kicked out of the internet, dude. <laughs> what What's going on? Did you just turn your truck on? Yeah, my phone's going to die. I got to plug the hook. <laughs> yeah. But all we heard was just. <laughs> doo, doo, doo. Oh. Well, it's a Dodge, you know. I mean, okay. It's a yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, sorry. Explain to the people again what, we, what we're doing before you were rudely interrupted. <laughs> I'm going to give you some context. Ten questions plus a bonus question. Uh, all these questions involve numbers. Uh, basically, you know, whether that's five, it could be a year, 2002, whatever. So wh- whoever's number, you know, if you correct, if it's correct or it's the closest gets the point, if that makes sense, uh, one point is awarded to the person that, that answers the question correctly, uh, half a point for a tie. So say three people answer the same, same, same answer, then it'd be po- half a point for all those people. Does that make sense? The bonus. We're not question- doing, we're not doing quarter points and <laughs> third <laughs> points anymore. No. Could you hit us with a quick example? Like, what do you, what do you mean? So, uh, what year was I born? Right. And, and now, now correct me if I'm wrong, but how we played this in the past, I don't think Sam's been involved in one of these, but sure. uh, we go kind of around the horn. Everyone answers, and then the answer is then revealed. It is. Yep. Okay. And then in the event that say so, so what year was I born? You got three of you guys answer, or two of you guys answer, 1997 that's correct then you each get a half a point but if only one of you answers 1997 then you get that one point does that make sense sure sure yeah. got it but it's all all the all the answers are pretty much like numbers for you know yeah they're pretty much all numbers yeah now like is there it. any categorical theme to these questions other Absolutely. than numbers I, no i just sit down and i i stare out at the lake this afternoon and came up with them i just whatever Beautiful. came up with they are completely 100% random. Uh, I think the best part is we get a just a brief glimpse into the mind of Hayes Baldwin as he's just staring at the lake. What does well, he think of? Here pulling we go. questions from the wind. I like Yeah, that. we're about to dive in. Hayes, lead us off. What's question number one? Que- okay. Question number one is kind of... Um, kind of a good question revolving around around podcasts, actually. Mm-hmm. So what year were podcasts created? And... Um, you know, there was two gentlemen that started podcasting and were basically um, credited with um, starting uh, podcasting. What year uh, was podcasting started? Ooh, it's a good question. How are we deciding who's going first? I think you can just take it right away. It yeah, don't, right. I'm gonna let sure. me let me write all the names down here. All right, all right, bye and hey, some time. And all right. Go ahead. Oh God, I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess it's fairly recently, so I'm gonna go with 99, 1999. Mm. Bart says 99. So, I, see, I, I don't think it is as recently, but uh, hmm, I feel like 99 isn't super recent though. This had been shortly after uh, Sir Isaac Newton invented the apple. Hey, could uh, I? Could I interject here, please? Yeah. yeah it, bullshit if you give a hint after I gave my guess. <laughs> when 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 Will and I used to do this, it was a free-for-all. And I'm talking like everybody was on Google, all right? So none of that shit. No Google. <laughs> no, yeah, no well, Google. Hands up. Hands please. Up. You know, I, I, I don't want clean, any of that. Clean court here. Clean Integrity court. of the game. No <laughs> Bing either. Fuck that. Well, what's, what's Bing, man? Google it. 
<laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> um, okay, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with 2005. Okay, pick says 2005. Soby, I- I'm gonna go 2001. Okay. Post okay. Y2K, everybody hops on. People want to hear some chatter. I'm gonna go. I like. <laughs> That was kind of what I wanted to do. I'm going to go um, north. Or... I'm going to go north. I'm going to go 2006. Ooh, he's taking the over. Ooh, wow. Okay. okay. I right. think I'm over. happy with that because it could have been way earlier, but I guess we'll find out. I will know. Okay. Well, uh, it was 2004. Oh! oh, 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 oh. That's Let's incredible. go! And wins this one. That's incredible. Who now, so who started it? Where did it come from? What, yeah. Do you have details on that or just the numbers? Yep, Adam Curry and Dave Weiner are credited with starting basically yeah. the first podcast. All I know is their names, and um, they came up with the idea in 2003, and then and then the actual podcast itself in 2004. So that's crazy. It, I mean, it's not that's 20 years ago. Not um, that like ago. not that long ago, but no. like, I, I also remember, like, I remember Jody white starting a podcast with like FLW and stuff. Like I was in high school. So that would have been, you know, 2010 and stuff. And it's crazy mm-hmm. that like, it was all that from the inception. That's so much, you know, not, it's just not I'm, that far, I'm especially with radio shows forever. How well that podcast did or like where they ended up. I mean, I don't know if they still are involved in the podcast game or if they're just chilling on a big boat somewhere, but who knows? I don't know if it was a big deal where they got paid, paid a lot back then, but now it's like everyone and their fucking brother has a podcast. Eh? Yeah. Sure seems that way. No, but not everyone and their brother is the number one outdoor podcast in the world. I'll tell you that for free Hayes. Yeah. I think and that past the barbs really yep. filling that slot. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, Hayes. Number two, what do you got? Number two, today is October 2nd, um, and it was like 90 degrees today. I was in my boat just sweating balls, all right? Absolutely sweat dripping down the side of my face, uh, eyes glued to the live scope, trying to figure out how I can catch these Gull Lake walleyes, and, man, they were a son of a bitch today, let me tell you. Um, but, so, what is was the record low temperature for this day in history, okay? What was the record low temperature for this day in history, in other words, the lowest daily high um, for this day in in history. Are we, what, are we talking in Minnesota? Or are wait, we you're saying the the, the record talking, lowest high or the record low? The record low for October second. Is that what I'm getting? Correct. In, Where? The, state of Minnesota, in the state of Minnesota. In, in Minnesota. Okay. The this record. Is, this is the lowest daily high, so it's the you know the 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 warmest point of the day, but it, it's yeah, the, it's yeah. the. Okay. Yes, that's what I want to clarify on. Um, okay, Pink, you wanna you take it this time, and then we'll go around the horn and just kind of shift over. Yeah. Be, so, this, what, this, yeah. This, well, why don't we just cycle around? No matter who gets what, we'll just move down one for. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yep. All right. So I will. I will take. Uh, hmm. Let's see. I, all of history, huh? All recorded history. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm going to go with 26 degrees Fahrenheit. God damn. That was just, that was the high that day is what you're saying. That was the high. That was it. It was a cold day. Well, yeah. (laughs) Below freezing. (laughs) October 2nd, huh? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go 18, 18 above 18. I'm going to go lower than pink. I'm going 18. It was 18 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit. (laughs) Fahrenheit. And, Who's up, Bill? I'll go. Um, just, just like step, step back and and think about. I mean, they've been keep keeping track of this. It looked like to me since nineteen, since the early nineteen twenties, I guess, or nineteen yeah. something like that. So it's, but I don't know. I I thought, yeah, I'll, yeah. I don't know. I can't yeah. really say. Much. Yeah, I think that's that's good there. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, <laughs> man, I got cold. Um. I'm, I'm gonna go with what was the two guesses prior to me and one was what one was, one was 26 and one was 18 okay i'm gonna go i'll, I'll go 16 degrees oh october cool. 2nd in minnesota uh so i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with 41 
See, I feel like that was a terrible guess given you were the last one to answer this. Yeah, why wouldn't you just take the over <laughs> the whole thing? You guys, I, I, I got this. I mean, it. it's locked in, so whatever. He's, he yeah. locked it in. He wants to be it, dead on. I, I, if in. it's in your heart, it's 41. It's burning in your heart. What? How was it? I mean, like, what was it like down there, Sobe? 90 degrees today? Yeah, wow. it was like 86, dude. It was. It was, it was that's, incredible. That, that's unbelievable for this time of year. We're cold weather dreaming here, Hazer. <laughs> you are. But but so actually, the, re- the the answer didn't really surprise me much. But it just happened to ha- happen to fall with the day. But the answer is 44 degrees. That was the record. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. So you guys are fucking chirping. Hard, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm just saying you left the door open. Yeah. You know? No, I knew I was right. You buffoons. <laughs> <laughs> lowest recorded high. Are you that's, kidding yeah, me? That's pretty cold. Well, high. The yeah, lowest the high, recorded yeah. high. It's not the lowest low. Well, it, it confused me. I mean, it was confusing. <laughs> okay. We'll give you a break. You just got back from Alaska. Chill down one point. God. <laughs> All right. Oh, we All got right, a Hazer. What got do you got? I between Bart and Pink. Look out. Oh. All right. Fire up. Number three. Let's, let's go. go. Number three is a music question. I'm I'm a man who loves music. I mean, gotta have a music question, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and a man who likes hip hop music, you know. I like hip hop music. Um but rapper Key Glock, cousin of the late and now deceased rapper Young Dolph, um, has how many gold certified singles? Um, he does have nine albums, okay? But Key Glock has how many gold certified singles on the on the charts? Um, and I and I I will name the name them after after the guesses. But again, Key Glock, cousin of the late and great Young Dolph, R.I.P. Uh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Young Dolph. R.I.P. Dolph. Yeah. So he lead us off. Actually, in my boat, because I was thinking of the question, I listened to four Key Glock albums on repeat all day long, and it was pretty loud. <laughs> um, and I've got I've got really nice speakers in the boat, so so everyone could hear. So hey. hey, before before anyone starts to answer this question, I would like to say that at some point, past the bar, we'll be putting out a uh, best of Hayes Baldwin uh, Spotify <laughs> playlist for everyone. Um, yeah. That will include everything in uh, the the uh, trivia here. So we'll have all of the singles from East Atlanta, Santa, including all of the uh, aforementioned uh, yeah. ones in this in this podcast here. Number yes. one outdoor boat yeah. hot bangers. Um, <laughs> that'll be called the playlist. So you can look for that. Adam put it together. Adam put it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, I can do it's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just go off the cuff and say six. He has six. Six he Glock has six. Six gold certified. Yeah, yeah. Had Young Dolph not died, it would have been more, but it's going to be six. Okay, okay. I'll go. um, I'm going to go with four. Will is going to say four. Man. (sighs) Now, I, 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 I might add that. I mean, though, there's, there's nine albums that he's on, and he's been in the rap game since. 2017 so six years basically i don't know if that changes the answer to anyone but it doesn't no i'll no. uh <laughs> i'll go with seven uh Bart, <laughs> go with seven okay the over and so be uh would- so let's see here so se- seven is the highest right now huh yeah so yeah. Sobe said six will said four and Bart, Bart said, said- Bart said seven. Bart took the over. I, uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead here and be, just because I have been, I have been wrong on this before, uh, especially with the uh, artists that you've selected previously. Um, that I'm gonna take the again over here okay. and go and go eight. Eight. Okay. Damn. Oh. So, uh, rapper Key Glock. Um, I must, I must mention again is now the the cousin of of deceased rapper Young Dolph. Um had four gold certified singles giving will the correct answer he was oh, wow. well done got it well, well done, done. Well, done. Well, done. Well, well done well done well done um, and i just wanted to kind of mention the names of the songs because they're all great songs i listened i spun them all the day in the illumicraft um gang shit no lame shit since <laughs> six mr glock and ambition for cash are the four songs um, <laughs> all just wonderful wonderful tunes that you can listen to <laughs> With the family, um, 
uh, four long- classics, no doubt. Yeah. What well, yeah. was the first song you said? I'm just writing it down. Gang shit, no lame shit. <laughs> As I said, these will all be on the playlist um, for everyone's viewing. Yeah, for Matt Voigt, who's listening right now with his kids, just hit the pause and go look those up. I'm sure, sure. your kids will learn a lot. And I, I will say most of the music related questions are hip hop questions, but I'm just, that's just kind of what I probably listen to 75% of the time. To be if you had, if you had to pick one out of those four Hayes, what would it be? Ambition for cash for sure. Personally, I think <laughs> that is a, that's a very, I mean, that's a song every, anybody could listen to and want to go and get, get some cash, you know, yeah. <laughs> we go to the ATM. Yeah. yeah. I feel that. Hit yeah. the trip, free ATM. I got but, the same bitch for cash. <laughs> that was good. And actually, uh, Key Glock has an album with Young Dolph called Dumb and Dumber, and it's a it's a damn good album. <laughs> I want to end too, and I I would I would really you know highly encourage you when you get off to 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 put that on and and meditate or do whatever do whatever you got to do. Yeah, we we may play a small snippet following uh, the tenth question here. Yeah, we may. We may. Yeah. All right, Hazer, what do we got next? We got a three-way tie for first. One, we one, do. and one. We do. Sam Toby's got to get on the scoreboard. He's got to dig out of the Question hole Question four. Sam's still hunting a point there. Um, I'm the last round here. I can punt high or low. But the fourth, the fourth question was astonishing to me. Um, and I looked up all these, these world record fish, which I like to do these questions of world record fish. Um, and this was the world record blue catfish. Uh, was caught in Kerr Lake in 2011. I don't know exactly. I think that's in the south somewhere, maybe in Alabama or something like that. How large was the world record blue catfish caught in 2011? Uh, We're talking but, pounds here. And blue this is the wor- catfish in pounds. Um, this not, is the world not, record. This isn't. This isn't. Yeah, no, this is the world this, record. This, this isn't United the world States. record blue catfish. Now there's obviously channel cats, flatheads, blues. What I will say is the blues do the blues do get bigger than the flatheads and the channels. Um, oh, I think they they're bigger. What? They're the biggest. They're the biggest. Yeah, they are the biggest. Yeah. Uh, um. Okay. Have you guys ever, have you guys ever encountered a blue catfish? I caught one one time. It's on the border of North Carolina and Virginia. I just had to look it up. I was curious. I okay. I have not personally uh, fondled one of these. However. I know that I saw this article about this fish being caught. Really? I, think, I, I, I don't know if I saw this article, but I always see big blue catfish being re- reported down south. So I'm intrigued to see what the answers are. And mine's yeah. probably going to be wrong. But, Bill, did, what do you got? Did Hannah Barron catch it? Was it Hannah Barron? She didn't, but we wish oh, she caught it with her one, hand. You would have hoped she did, eh? Oh, God, she, she is so. gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, holy. <laughs> Speaking of guests, let's get on the podcast. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and a parent. Um, and her Write jacked. that down. Yeah, God, her dad is jacked. That fucker's huge. Um, <laughs> um, I don't really know much about blue catfish, but I'm going to guess that have they been, oh, God, I'm going to guess 72 pounds. 72 LBs. Which that now, well, okay, go ahead. Uh, now I'm. You 70, said it. You're locked in. You said locked. it. I'm going to go. Uh... The 381. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, they, they knocked the sides off her. Holy shit. 381 pounds? You think it's a Goliath? Group? I, uh... yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hope I, I hope Pinkala and, and Sobey's answers are... I mean, I hope Sobey and Bart's answers are... I, I literally remember seeing this, and I don't know why. I, for whatever reason, this number's sticking in my head. Like as soon as you said it, I knew you were going to ask about the weight, and I, for whatever reason, 113 pounds is just resonating in my brain hole. Okay, so this just leaves Sobe with, I mean, holy, <laughs> holy fuck, do I say some gap in between? I, I really, I really, I, I, I I'm just going to go with 114 pounds here. He's taking just the, the over, just okay. the over on Pinkala, but under, under Bart, but. I really don't think Bart's answer was that outlandish. I really don't. They are just freaking greasy bastards. I feel, I feel like I guessed too high, but I, I'm telling no. you, dude, that was in my brain. No, I don't think you guessed too think, high. I, I, I want to say, I want to say like low. 168. If I had to make a second guess, I would have guessed 168. But, but you did guess, you did guess 114, which is one more than Pink Collas, and it was good enough for the correct answer. The, the answer is 143 pounds. 
Yes! So, yes! God damn, that's a big catfish. Boom! Yeah, what? that's. I, mean, I saw a picture of it. That was freaking unbelievable. Wow. Stop. Wow. I'm bad. I'm bad at estimating yeah, fish, actually, if you guys didn't know. Bart, Bart's answer was far, far off. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Far Some away. might say the most incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. That's uh, almost as bad as uh when three. didn't God damn it. What was the other the one? It was about how really tall bad. trees were. Yeah, how <laughs> tall trees were. <laughs> had like 300 feet, like a football field blank. <laughs> That's God. still one of the best quotes from this podcast. <laughs> All right, so we're dead even across the board. Yeah, I back like, to an even game. I really like that the fact that we've got a four way tie here. Yeah, this is this is about to get real. All right, what do you got, Hayes? Back, background of our question coming into question five: How many countries are in Europe, gentlemen? How many countries are in Shit. Europe? Oh fuck, that's actually a good one. Um, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, and I'm first, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. I think, yeah, Bill are, Arthur's are. husband. 31? Okay, 31 for Bart. Does anyone know the actual answer to this? No. 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 For no, real. Must know that. Okay. Do you? <laughs> I actually I actually did know the answer to it, but I had to Google it to make sure, and I was correct, actually. Wow. All right, I, I think. <laughs> All right, I, yeah. It, it, I would it, be correct after Googling this as well. Um, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to say uh, 17. 17, Pink Hall. Countries in Europe. Oh, Sobe. I'm going to go south of Pink Hall and go 16. Okay. Wow. wow. I've got 31, 17, and 16, giving Will the opportunity to either split the difference, go high. I mean, what do you want to do, man? Um, How many countries are in Europe? I'm going to go with um, – I looked at some of them. I didn't even know they fucking existed, to be honest with you. I'm going to go with uh, 20, 24. 24. Lock that in. I'm going to go kind of right in the middle. 24 countries in Europe. Yeah. All That's right. It's sort of low now that I think about it. But what is the answer? The answer is 50. Yeah. Oh, 50. Hell yeah. All yeah. right. Cool. Art, the- okay. Well, uh Past wow. the barb, not exactly a geography hotspot for those no. that are curious. No, I should know better. My dad is a geography teacher. I mean, that's oh. pretty. Oh. Really? Oh. He's obviously Clip. not a very good one. Clip nope. this and send this right to him. <laughs> oh Lord, we apologize. Really? Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was not really an answer that was even close, to be honest. Oh. I'll take. I'll take the mini one. But Bart Bart is going to take the lead with that. Um, I like it. All right, I have ball here to be honest. I have to say a dirty little secret. Like uh, one of, one of Steph and I's favorite shows, just kind of in the evening sometimes, catching episode here or there is like Love Island UK. Yeah, Love Island Europe, and so and they really do explain where these people are from and do a lot of geography. And I really thought I was on the better end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you you're thought Love such Island an educational program. Yeah, you yeah. thought Love Island really taught you, huh? Those chicks on there are really hot, no doubt. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Great storyline. Some would say if Steph's listening, is a great storyline. <laughs> storyline, yeah. I don't care about <laughs> big tits. <laughs> you watch right, Hazer, the what European do you got? architecture. Um. So this is question number six, and it, and it revolves around 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 myself and. The question would be, how much would it would a half day a guide trip in my boat cost you, if you decided to step into my boat this uh, year? Okay. This year? This, this year, year? This year? This year? And this is going to adjust as as everything gets so goddamn expensive. The prices are going up. That's all there is to it. Now, now, just because we talked about this, does this include the tip as well? No, but we <laughs> we I've got some funky stories about tipping, boy. Oh, I'm sure you do too, Will. I mean. Yeah, before you hopped on, Bill gave us a good one. Really? All right, Pink, what is uh, Hazer's half-day guide trip charge? Half-day. Half-day with Hazer. Four hours with me, buddy. Four hours. Wow. You know, um, I'm tempted to just say a really wait, high number here. Wait, wait. wait. What's Will, do you do half-days? Yeah, I do half-days. What's your What's your rate? 
five hundred. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna say half day with Hazer is gonna run you uh, somewhere in the ballpark of uh, of a uh, four twenty five plus a case of beer. All right, four twenty five plus a case of beer. So it's four twenty five. That's the answer. Yes. Yeah, the- but the beer is re- still required. Okay, it's not factored into the price. So I I want to I want to say, like you know. Before things got crazy out of control and gas prices were super high, I want to say it was somewhere in the range of like a one seventy five or two hundred. Really? But I want to say I want to say it's with haze. But it's a half day. You got to remember. I want I want to say it's four hours, and he catches them. Hey, I we did listen. We did two hour trips this summer too. Two hour trips. Make it worth his gas. Oh. Two hour trips. I'm gonna Where say I, two. I'm going to say 225. So I'll be saying 225, really. Okay. See, what do you think, hey, sir? Is Am I up? Will's up. Will? I guess I don't, I'm sure I'm out of touch with the going rate in the BLA now, but I'm going to say half day. I'm going to say, did 400 even get asked yet? It hasn't. No, I've, we've got, I've got 425. Oh, and I've oh, got. I'll, I'll say 400. I already said it. So I'll do 400. 400 even. How about you, Bart? Uh, I'm going to go, uh, based off of your reaction, too, to Bill, um, I'm going to say 325. 325. Whew, that's a good guess. Well, that's a good guess. Now, Will, um, I you, you actually charge 500 for half day? Uh, that's Yeah. I mean, that's what the outfitter is. I don't yeah. see it that but yeah you don't see that but that's what it costs in alaska that's montana they're in alaska it's all lodge pricing you know so um yeah but here in montana half day guided trip 500 okay and i'm i'm just gonna throw it back to uh it was this is kind of interesting this is where just i remember the prices before things got nuts but it it was uh, it was well it was you and chad and i we went out with nick miltimore actually Years, years and years, and it cost two ninety five for four hours. I rem- do you remember that? I mean, I don't even. Yep. This was long ago, um, but definitely the, the gigging wrap that day. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's, actually that opened really opened my eyes to it. To be honest with you, hey, but yeah, that was many moons ago. Yeah. Um, but Pinkala is spot on here. Four twenty five. Is the price? We'll take that. Yeah. We'll take that. Yeah. Now, I I just want to follow this up. Um, you know, not that you uh, tend to indulge while you're guiding, but uh, from a, a you know, I would consider a walleye expert perspective. Uh, does it seem that the bite tends to get better um, with the liquor drinks or with the beer? Oh, the walleye bite. Yeah. Uh dude. I think to be honest. So I had I had this is full disclosure. I provided Jack Daniels honey for all my customers this summer. Um, Jack Daniels honey w- was on board only for celebrations, basically um, the liquor. And it seemed like that was kind of my, my, my good luck charm, to be honest, just a little nip of Jack honey. If my customers wanted, of course. Um, but I'd say the liquor definitely gets them going a little bit more than the beer. Beauty. I'm going to write that down just for future reference. That's good. That's good. But oh, yeah, I one lost hazer. one there, boys. 425. Have guys, call have Hazer. Have you guys had the Jack Daniels, honey? I oh, have. Delicious. Oh. Oh, man, oh, man. All right. What's our next one, Hayes? I, I'd say everybody here loves loves a Baconator from time to time. Do you guys know where the Baconator originates from? Wendy's, of course. <laughs> Wendy's, of course. And and this question is, is fitting. Um what year did the first Wendy's open? Oh man, dude, that is such a hard question. It's a great it's question. So, so deep. oh my so god, deep. this is a great question. Oh my god, what? 
That's hard, dude. That's what so hard. <laughs> Sobe <laughs> hates our competition it, segments. He's he hates them so much. I do, dude. I want to do good. I want to do good. <laughs> I'm so nervous. We, he's it's, a rookie. He's a rookie. It's okay. He, you know, I've only ever won one weigh-in or won anything, dude. I've only ever won once on this podcast. He's just walking bullshit. into a buzzsaw here. Oh, dude. I li- Every podcast, I break out this little freaking notebook, and I jot notes, and I freaking act smart, dude, and then I get launched with a question like this. Oh, man, just judging off of how old Wendy is now and then her dad. Um, <laughs> how old is Wendy going to be now, like 84? She's older than dust, dude. <laughs> she looks as good as ever. She does. She really does. Oh, wow. Um, how, when was the first – when did the first Wendy's open? When did the first Wendy's open? I'm going to go – I'm going to go 1972. Toby's going 1972 for the first Wendy's. God, that could be way too soon, though. Might could be, be way too, too soon. Could be, yeah, could be anything, really. Hmm. Was that the log cabin Wendy's in Niswa? That one's a legendary Wendy's. Um, but the inside shut down since COVID. Not, not been open since COVID. It's the couch by the fireplace anymore? <laughs> no, you can't. That was kind of the spot where we where we kind of gathered after, after fishing excursions. But... Oh. Um, who's up now? You, Bill. Oh, that would be Cap- you, Captain Bill. I'm gonna go. Um, I think a little earlier. I'm gonna go 1961. Ooh, 1961 wow. was the first Wendy's. He says. Okay. I am gonna go with uh 1957. 1957. Everyone's punting low. Everyone's punting lower than what I said. Okay. Wow. wow. I, I really feel like um, that it wasn't as long ago, maybe, as people think. Um, this isn't the Don's or the BK Lounge. This is Wendy's. We're no, I mean, about. we're talking square I believe patties, it. fresh, never frozen. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know. Where? Oh. Yeah. So, wow. You know, I... I, I I think the burgers are pretty superior. I actually had one the other day. I think they're very superior to oh, other fast food. Baked potato, too. Oof. A baked potato, yes. And chili. They have actually got decent chili. I actually like it. Yeah. And I mean, you know, uh, uh, so 1977 is the is the high guess right now. Huh? 72, 72. 72. 72 is the high guess. I, I mean, I feel like just, just as, you know, to keep things honest here, I'm going to have to say 1973. All right. Um, so this is, this is kind of interesting before I, before I reveal the answer, I was in the local grocery store in Niswa Schaefer's here the other night. And I actually saw a can of Wendy's chili for sale. They actually had it for sale. Really? Really? For for $4, which was strange. Um, but I purchased it and put it (laughs) over the oven. It gave gave me the shits. Now, can I ask what does what does a what does a cup of Wendy's chili cost at Wendy's versus what does this can cost? So I had to. This was interesting that you say that. I had to double check, and the price is only twenty cents off, and it's actually cheaper to purchase it in the can from the grocery store. Interesting. So that- if you're really pinching those pennies. Um. You know, I, there's lots of chilies in a can, but I would say that's one of the better ones, though it did make me spew. <laughs> All right, reveal it. I got to know. I got to know. So I w- I'm really, I'm, I'm happy to inform inform you, Sobe, that the correct answer was 1969. Oh! You, giving you the win, my friend. Woodstock happened, and Wendy was born, and they opened up that gal restaurant to make potatoes beautiful chili and freaking baconators come on <laughs> let the score rise we got a freaking game <laughs> let's get a scoreboard update going into the home stretch here uh this is going to be going on to question number eight up next here but we've got we've got will with one point and the rest of the boys are tied at two cutthroat right. boys cutthroat i like it and Will is in the dark. I'm sweating. Oh yeah, it's the lights turned off in Montana. <laughs> yeah. Is it seven? 7- oh, there it is. Is it seven forty there, brother? It is. 
<laughs> fucking pitch black out. Yeah, same here. Just stare like staring out into the abyss. I don't want to sit here with my light on in my truck because it's I'm already poaching Wi Fi and so we're gonna yeah. stay. It's okay, you can stay dark. dark. That's all right. That's all, all right. right in the dark. I suppose. Sobe, are you back or is he still waltzing around his ground? I think he's just taking a little victory piss there on the last one. He seemed kind of excited, so we'll see what happens here. I don't the best, think he... the best oh, freeze of Sobe's Wi Fi career a, a though was by far his his, get, his expression when he right got that. Yes. No, that was great. Mid rant, we just had, you know, a beautiful, a beautiful uh shot of his face there, looking yeah, that... quite happy about himself. Yeah. Wow. He's yeah. really he must have a hell of a stream going here, boys. Have we've had we've had a lot of don't a lot of guests kind of step away in the middle of the podcast for up to five, ten minutes at a time. They like to. Yeah. That that seems pretty standard. Um, I don't know if that's something that all podcasts experience, but you know. All right, here we go. God bless Wendy's we tend to operate fruit. on Sobe's time. God bless let's, Wendy's Malt's fruit. Let's see all right, Hazer. Through. Question eight. What do you got? Now this is a a Minnesota related question too. We're all from originally from Minnesota and we actually have one of the top eight sales taxes in the country. Okay. Sales tax. Um, what is the average sales tax in Minnesota in 2023? So right now, what is the average sales tax in Minnesota? This is a number, by the way. Um, what is the average sales tax in Minnesota? We are again, a top eight in the country. Uh, shit ain't cheap here. It's tax to fuck. Uh, it ain't the it's the the rich man north of richmond if you get my what i'm saying <laughs> i'm sure you guys have heard heard the tune but quick 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 interjection Hayes, you sent me a song by that guy before he exploded this was yes like, and at, that, wow. at that time he had like a thousand monthly listeners on spotify how did yep. you find that so i was listening to oliver anthony uh i found it in my I'd sit in my trailer in Vermilion at night and just and go through um, on on Apple Music. Just uh, it'll when you click on somebody, it recommends eight or ten other people. And I probably went through 150 people before I stumbled on the song "90 Some Chevy," um, and that I believe that's the one I sent you. And yeah. that was that was months, I believe, before he blew up, or maybe it was a month, or I don't even know. Um, but wow. that song on YouTube now has, I think, up. 50 million views or something like that but yeah oliver anthony wow he's a visionary that's all i know he is well, yeah that's i guess crazy. that's crazy you found him before he he blew up now he's i mean yeah we'll add to the playlist yeah, yeah. all right bill sales tax <laughs> sales tax in minnesota i don't even know i'm gonna guess and i don't really have a clue i um i'm gonna say Seven point four percent. Seven point four percent. It. I. I did read that it. It. It has gotten as high as twelve percent before, which is kind of nuts. That is nuts. It's a good guess. I thought I was going to be around there. Um. I'm going to go seven point seven. Bart's going to go seven point seven percent sales tax in Minnesota in 2023. Now, I did there they did run a story on the news uh last night about actually increasing this sales tax uh eminently. So oh uh I, I do have a little first hand information here, but it only gets me in the ballpark being that this is an average. Um so I think uh oof, I, I think I'm gonna land uh God, I hate to just get in the middle of all this, but I, I think as an average, I'm going to have to say uh, 7.9%. All right. So I've got Will with 7.4, Bart with 7.7, and Pinkal with 7.9, leaving Sobe the option to, you know, basically go up, over, under, um, in between, I guess, if you want. Um, um, again, what is the what, the what was What was Stolsky at? Stolsky is at 7.4%. Um, the average sales tax. Now, I don't. Is food taxed? Yes. Right. I, I think it's like yeah. I think there's things like maybe clothing, clothing, and like groceries that maybe don't fall yeah, under the same. Yeah, I don't think groceries are taxed, or maybe they are. Hmm. I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I just I don't know. wipe the card. Yeah, so do I. Just let just <laughs> let it let the debt pile up, baby, and let me go fishing. Fuck them. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Golf. Half of me wants to say eight, but yeah. that seems so high. But okay. So I, I again I have seven four seven 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 nine. So I'll go eight. Go. Uh, uh, no, no. Yeah. I'll go. I, I'm locking in seven point three. Seven point three percent sales tax. Right under will. You're going right under will. That's locked in now. Locked in. I'm locking it in. I, I wrote it down. So the okay. average yep. sales tax in Minnesota is actually six point eight seven five percent. Giving Toby uh, the giving Toby the point. It. Giving Toby the point here. Unbelievable. And believe it or not, it actually gives Sobe the lead. Woo! It does. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> From the ashes. From the ashes. He was he was down down in the ditch. I will but, say though that taking the over probably would get you coming here because it looked like almost all the metro was going over eight percent in the next uh little bit. I, I had seven point nine written down. That's what I was gonna guess and pink guess <laughs> it. And then I was like, screw it, dude. Seven point three. So it like must it. be lo- it must be low outside the metro, eh? Six point eight. <laughs> it, 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 that's, I mean, that's kind of that's a lot. Like, I mean, I've been to Florida and some different places, like even the Dakotas and stuff. And the tax is not even. I mean, it's the tax here in Minnesota is pretty nuts. I guess even the income tax and everything. I mean, yeah. No sales tax in Montana. No what? No sales tax at all in Montana. Oh, I well, thought you said let's... something else. Is there? What what's the other? Is there a lot of good lakes out there, buddy? Because I'm moving out there then. <laughs> well, there's one you could fish it every day for the rest of your <laughs> Fort Peck. Yeah, Peck. Are you gonna join us on Peck this winter, Will? God, I hope so. That was fun. I need to come back. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Question. Hey, number- what do you got? Question nine. Question nine. This is a really this is a fun question because I think when I'm an older older guy and i have a house and a family and whatnot i may have a few of these running around but how 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 old is was the world's oldest cat how old was the world's oldest cat um her her name was cream puff and (laughs) she she was born in texas in 1967 19 what she was born in texas in 1967 and she died I all I can't tell you when she died. Oh <laughs> god damn, I thought you were gonna do it. And I was like, yes. you almost did. I can't tell you when she died, but Cream Puff, Cream Puff was Cream is the world's Puff. oldest cat, Cream Puff. I think we did the world's oldest dog one time. Yeah, we did. I, I think, think we did. I think was, gonna... was, we were not close. No, no, no one was close. It was like twenty six or twenty seven, maybe. I'm I'm gonna go uh for some reason thirty one popped up immediately. I'm gonna go oh. thirty one old cat. That's thirty one. Jesus Christ. Right. Jesus, that's old, that's, dude. That's, that's so, so old. old. <laughs> but we were older so, than you. We were so under the dog when we did the I dog know, one. I know. But I know. This is a 20. cat. It's different, dude. I know. I cats live longer than dogs for sure. I think. I mean. I, I mean. Or, the oldest ever, though, eh? The oldest cat ever, Cream Puff, was born in 1967 in Texas. Fuck. But <laughs> you know what? Like, I actually know of a 24 year old cat. Believe it or not. Oh, oh Hazer, you can't give that up. You well, whatever. Did, I talk. We already I, did. I, no, I, I, I know of a 24-year-old cat. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying. <laughs> the answer or not. Yeah, but someone would have scooped in there at 19 or some well, shit. Well, they got might it. still. <laughs> <laughs> what is your cat? This? Do you know Cream Puff? I don't know, Cream Puff. <laughs> Sam, did you say what'd you say, buddy? He's not up. Pink's I'm not up, up yet. <laughs> oh my god. I had 24 written down, dude, and I just X'd it out. <laughs> I feel oh god damn the old Yeah, guy. Hayes screwed me. <laughs> yeah, you well, did. Guess what? We yeah, already had a fucking everyone else 31. thought I was so high. Okay. No, all right. I just said I know of a 24 year old cat. That's all I said. I didn't answer. <laughs> you the did question. say that. You did say that. Yeah. Oh boy. Um. All right. It's me. I'm gonna go. I feel like these cats can just get dusty dude, like, old. Like a 13 year old cat is old, dude. Like a six. Right, but like I feel like, like people have that. People have that. Yeah. People have what? Like this. 
13 year old cats. Oh, fuck, dude. I, my <laughs> parents have a fucking like, 14 year old cat. Okay, so these bitches can get old. They're oh, they can be old as dust. What? What? What'd you say? Who said Bill? Did you did you say an answer? No, no. no. Oh. Oh, okay. A dime a dozen. A thirteen year old cat. Time is... a dozen. Yeah. All right. Fuck it. I'm going high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm go. I'm playing to win here. Uh, thirty one. You say Bart? Yep. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be like right 40, in there. I feel like forty's too old. Thirty nine. Thirty nine owners. Outlive the owners for sure. Twenty four <laughs> fucked me. No one would have went I'm, above me. I'm I'm gonna shark Adam and go thirty two. Thirty two years old is the God, oldest. God, that cat. that I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shark him right, just a year older. Thirty one okay. years old. Fill 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 us in. Fill in the gap. I'm gonna go 30. 30. Oh. Will's going thirty. So he's taking yeah. the under, knowing that. 24 is commonplace so much. Yeah, so no, that it's not, Azer, not commonplace. What, you even no, know I, a 24. I know of a cat that was 24, but how does that change anything? It doesn't change Will, anything. Will could be on, dude. It could it could be freaking 20. He could not it. He could not it. So the correct answer is 38. Oh, Let's holy go! shit. Oh, <laughs> what? Green Puff was born in 1967 and died in 2005. Jesus Unbelievable! Christ. Where? Wow! Where? What location? Uh, Texas. Texas. Wow! Perfect. Everything's uh, let's be real. Texas. Before you said twenty-four, what were you guys gonna say? Soby was gonna say twenty-four. Twenty-four. Yeah, that was it. I would. I would not have been that high. <laughs> I thought really? I was guessing ridiculous. I thought it was. I thought that was a stupid guess, but I was like twenty. That's the only reason I said 39 is because I didn't want to sound stupid and say 40. <laughs> what, what, let's do a little scoreboard update here. Scoreboard update. We've got Pink Hall and Sobe Notch at three apiece. We've got Will with one and Bart with two. Sorry. Um, and actually, I should mention that the, the, the bonus question coming up here is worth two points. Oh, Ooh, oh. here we go. All right. Captain that's, Bill. That's, Captain that's Bill. question 11 is the bonus. Yes, and I guess in the event of a tie, I don't know. Split the prize. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hazer, hit us. What's question 10? Question 10. This is a good one. Um, it's actually another musical-related question a little bit. But singer Johnny Cash had how many children? Singer Johnny Cash had how many children? Folsom Prison, Folsom Prison Blues. Have you guys Pink, ever? Thank you. First, indulge. First. Oh. <laughs> There's a pale horse. I uh, <laughs> it's the name that's on it. <laughs> I have no idea what the answer to this question is. Um, hmm. What if it's zero? I was going to say it's, e <laughs> it's either zero or like a lot. <laughs> um, shit. You'd have to think there's got to be some Johnny right. Cash Juniors there's running out be, there. Right? Johnny there's Cash. The Ring of Fire. The <laughs> Ring of Fire. Seven. I'm going to go seven. 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 Yes, <laughs> oh, That's a really good number. Um, seven little munchkins running around. Just, just to be Johnny a little Cash obscure. Johnny Cash was busy then if he had seven. Shit. God, I want to... I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go eight. I'm gonna go. He had eight children. You know? They went they all didn't meet him, but he Cash had eight. had eight children, Sam. Yeah. Yep. That's what you're yeah, saying? Absolutely. Would you like me to lock, lock that? Lock that in. Lock that in. Sure. <laughs> yeah, what just what's the game? Oh, is that deal or no deal or whatever yeah. the fuck it is? Yeah, I'm gonna go. Am I up? Yeah, sure. Yep. I'm gonna go with uh three. Okay. So it's seven, eight, and three. Yeah, I kind of. You could, yeah, you could, you could answer in between, over, under. I mean, fuck, buddy. There's a lot of options. A lot of, could a lot be of a doors there. could be a trick question now. Could punt way low. I'm gonna go five. Bart's gonna go no. five. 
before you tell us the answer to this question, yeah. I'd, I'd just like to know uh, what 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 sparked the uh, interest in, you know, you know, forging a question of this caliber. Uh, to be honest, I was I was I actually was listening because I was in the boat when I came up with these questions. I brought a notepad and a pen in the boat. Um, and as I was fishing along, I had the mostly key Glock was playing. As I said, I listened to like four of his albums, but Johnny Cash popped on. Um, it's got to be a wild Spotify or Apple Music playlist going on. Yeah. Go from there yeah. to there. Like that is a leap. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and I just was like, oh, Johnny Cash. And I just start Googled Johnny Cash and looked into his life a little bit and um, came oh, up with this God. answer. And it's five. Fair enough. What's up? What did he have? I bet it's five. Let me, let me come back here. So Johnny Cash had five children. Fuck yeah. God, <laughs> So actually, Bart's going to get this point. Unbelievable. Um, four daughters and a son. The daughters named Roseanne, Cindy, Tara, and Kathy. And the son, John Carter Cash. Oh, I'm so what mad. What a baller at name. And their dad is a goddamn legend. I like to think there's two more that no one knows about. Country music's greatest, probably. I mean. There's a man coming around taking names. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hazer, what's a bonus question? What? Well, so we're, we're, we've are we got a three-way tie going currently. Is that what I'm we hearing? got a three-way tie going currently. And this what's awesome about this question is we're going to figure out who's either going to be the clear winner here or we're going to have a a GD four-way four tie. tie. <laughs> um, if Will can answer Which, this correctly. At that point, you need to come up with a question instantly. A tie yeah, break. well, okay. I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this, this actually, um, a few nights ago, I, it might have been a re-recording or something. I, I was sitting with my elderly grandparents, and I was watching Jeopardy. Have you guys ever ever watched Jeopardy? Yeah. I have. Yep. Yes, I have. That's kind of a fun. I I really would like to be. I wouldn't be any good at it, but it'd be fun to be be on Jeopardy. You know. Um. <laughs> this is this is this one blew me away. <laughs> this one blew me away. <clears throat> what is the record amount of times that somebody has won Jeopardy in a row? Now, when you win Jeopardy, you advance to the next round, so on and so forth. So, what is the record amount of times somebody has won Jeopardy consecutively in a row? I remember wow. this being a huge discussion a few summers ago because a guy beat the amount of money that had won, but hadn't won as many as another guy. Should I mm -hmm. should I disclose the amount of money that he won? Is that going to make it easier for you guys? Because I can do that. No, no. I don't, yeah. You said no. No, no. I don't personally no. care, but if they okay. say no, sure. I, I think we say no. I think we just go into this. I will disclose the amount is... of money when we yeah when, following. But yeah, have you guys? Do, you guys have watched Jeopardy? Like, have you watched Jeopardy enough times where you see the same person on it a couple times? Or oh yeah, I think I yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you guys think about this question? Is this all right? Yeah, this is I a like good this. question. I think so, this is a very Sobe, good question. Soby, you're first. I hate being first for this one. So this, how many times has somebody won Jeopardy consecutively in a row? Uh, and I, I, I gotta, I gotta interject again. There's no limit to the amount of times you can win Jeopardy. By the way, but but there is a maximum because there this is. person did it. Mm hmm. That'd be a weird maximum number, but hey. I'm gonna. So I'm, me, what do you got? I'm gonna go eleven times. He won it eleven times in a row. 11. 1-1. One, one, locking it in. I'm going to go... Um, I'm going to go 87. 87, Christ. 87? Mm -hmm. You're going to go 87, Will. Yep. Oh, all right. I've got 11 from Sam. That really, yeah, we're really narrowing it down. I've got 87 from Will. Good luck, boys. I feel like Will knows something if he answered it like that. My God, he does because I think I think it's a lot. Um, 
This guy was an absolute genius. I'm going to go 63. Oh, shit. Mm. Oof. I know I for a fact you, Sobey's out, so we're good I there. think you guys are right there. I'm just like, because I know for sure that this is Ken Jennings. Yes. <laughs> Ken <laughs> Jennings. Not Ken. Ken. Yeah. Huh? This is it, Ken Jennings, yeah. It is. It's Ken Jennings. How, how do you know that? He's a savant. Well, and isn't he the new host of Jeopardy? Sometimes. Is he really? I think they locked that in. Oh, did they? I don't know. I, I thought I, it was the old, what was the old guy's name? Uh, he did he pass? Alex Trebek. Yeah, oh, rest back. Yeah, rip. R.I.P. Yep. Um, he's up there with uh, Dolph trapping. He's up there with Dolph just throwing fours in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> just, just straight up and saying open ended questions. Um, let's see. So seventy seven and sixty what? Sixty three. I said sixty three. No, I was eighty seven. Yeah, eighty seven. And, and, and eleven. Eleven. There was eleven in there. Sam, Sam's got 11. Yeah. Oh, you're you're right. Uh, but I, I I even think the like the high school kids go longer than 11. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sam, have you watched Jeopardy? That's almost yeah, as man, bad of a guess years. as Bill guessing 300 something feet for this. Because it's on like every day. It's not like once a week. It's a daily program. Yeah. Is yeah. it really? Yeah. Um, man, I I didn't think it'd be in the 80s. I just really didn't. I. It consecutively. Well, it consecutively. Might not, it might That's what I'm saying. It was like a know. big deal. Because okay, fuck it. I'm just going in. So, uh, sev- seventy. I hope it's way low. I hope it's way low. It is not. You're very wrong. <laughs> it was a lot, dude. Because it was like it is. Do we, have we have we kept track of who's won the the trivia's over the time? No, probably not. I've never won. You've never won, Will. I think Pink won it when we first did him. Pink was I've winning done well. everything. Pink I've was done well. Pink was winning every time. But it, there's been a hiatus, you know. Like we haven't oh. had you on. There's my there's, week. You know. I don't know. I don't know. What What is the I answer, think I, Hazer? I think I have a few dubs though. It's Ken yeah. Jennings. How much money? How many times in a row? How much Give money? Say that so, so so Ken Jennings won basically two and a half million dollars. Sounds like eleven to me. And he, <laughs> he win like they only win like twenty to thirty k each. That's each a lot time. of daily couples, yeah. So the correct answer is seventy four, giving Pinkall the, the oh, fuck, fuck. Let's go, boys. And actually, we're back. The the second closest would have been Bart, and then and then Will. It's a little high. Will was a little high. Yeah, I so knew many- it was. I knew it was right in that like sixty to eighty ballpark, and Will just threw everything off with that eighty. <laughs> I was like oh, eighty-seven. That you, was it. Wasn't too far off. No, no. it was. So good. do we do we know? Uh, you said two 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 and a half million dollars over seven, seventy. How many? Seventy-four times in a row he won. Jeopardy. Dude, doesn't that make you feel a little bad? Like those guys are absolute geniuses, and oh, added, yeah. you know, I mean. I mean, people have won who wants to be a millionaire one time and they've grossed right. half the amount of income as freaking what's his nuts doing it great 76 times in a row. Are you shitting me? And yes. he's just yes. dunking on like English uh, teachers on the show. Well, he yeah. sort of, <laughs> sort of, he kind of revolutionized the way it was played. You know, he would jump around the board to find the daily doubles. I mean, that was sort of his big thing was finding the daily doubles. So he would jump all, I mean, he had a strategy. It worked for him. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think I, I I recall watching some of his wins, uh, and you know, these guys were you know he was willing to do like the true daily double, uh, at will. You, oh, he, you know, he'd pay he'd work through it all. I mean, he, that's how confident he was. He was really impressive. What it what now, a, who is the other guy? Well, uh, yeah, the, I just looked the, this the up because I was in, yeah, it that just happened. I was intrigued. It was James Hallshauer, and he didn't win as many in a row. He yeah. actually is fourth on the record. He had 32 games compared yeah. to Ken Jennings, but he's second in winnings. He had 2.462 mil. But then wow. They collabed, wow. they collabed on a new game show. Have you seen that one? No, uh, I haven't seen that one, but that those, was the those crazy. Two guys are on it. Another like trivia game show where they play against like average people. 
You have to wow. look it up. Yeah. Wow. But like that, that, was, chase, that was, I think. That was the big deal going on a few years ago was when James was doing it because he was half of Ken Jennings number and was just blowing the money out of the out of proportion. I'm looking it up now. The Chase. The Chase is the game show that those two guys uh kind of started. Adam, when when will this when will this podcast hit the air? Next week. Or what? this week, Wednesday. This week, Wednesday, yeah. Oh, two days Wednesday from now. it'll hit the air. Okay. Never never mind. Is that soon enough? No, I was just going to interject and say a few things, but I, I can't. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Hayes, it has been another glorious segment of Trivia with Hayes. We got Ryan as the winner. So I, we got his first taste of Trivia with Hayes. It's an exciting time. Let's, yep. let's give a round of applause. Round of applause for Ryan and Hayes. Ryan for oh, pulling out and Hayes for just incredible. Yep. Ten questions, incredible. Yeah, oh, yeah amazing. Mean, we From can... Key Glock to Jeopardy to From Wendy's. Key Glock to Jeopardy. And, and I got a, I'm going to hit the road here, boys. And I just, I, I got a phone call and, and um, it was from Jim Linder earlier. And he, he was drilling this into my head that I need to throw a rigs for walleye. So tomorrow I'm going to be throwing Alabama rigs for walleyes. I'm going to head over to his house right now and, 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 and t- steal his a rigs, I guess. And tomorrow I will throw a rigs at walleyes with one hook in Minnesota. Unfortunately, I don't know. Um, what about you, Will? Are you allowed more than one hook there? Oh, we just lost. We Will. just lost him. But, but uh, I I've so. caught quite a few big walleyes on a rig, so I think you'll have fun, Hazer. Really? You've, you you yeah. actually? Have... Yeah, quite a few. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Uh, yep. Suspended or on the bottom? Both. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've caught them various lakes across Minnesota when I'm smally fishing. Yeah. It, do, it does work well in northern Wisconsin as they well. Crush. Yeah, they crush. Really. It. Really it does, mm-hmm. yeah. I've caught them there. Uh, uh, you can have three hooks there, though. So you know, ah. that's that's nice. I'm and, not really <laughs> thrown off by the one hook thing. Have you guys? Do you guys have any advice as far as placing the? I mean, the, obviously the 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 hook it being further back than the, I don't know how. Yeah, they, just throw just throw it on a Minnesota rig so the bait will be a little bit further back. That's probably what lit, yeah. Jimmy's going to or give you. or run or run all the non hook ones as a smaller swim bait than the one with the hook in it. Yeah, yeah, if you want to get it thing. deep, that's the way to do it with no blades. Yeah. If, and I would assume dipping the tail of, of, of the one with the hook in it, too, like maybe off-coloring the tail. Like Yeah, you, just make it chartreuse, chartreuse or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I think I, I ran like wow. 2.8-inch ones on all of the arms and then, a, you know, like a 3.2 on the center and yeah. you eat that up. I just, like, I, I just, I, I caught, and I guess maybe the competition will see this. I have a big tournament on Saturday on golf. It's, 15,000 to win, but, um, uh, I found some walleyes in extremely deep water and caught one 10 feet down Yeah, nice over basically over the basin of the lake. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dang, and I'm looking on live scope and, uh, all of a sudden now I'm throwing at these fish and and they're reacting to the bait. And so, you know, I know, I know they're, you know, walleyes, pretty much you know for the most part uh, most of them i'm sure there's like some suckers and other shit in there but um it, it was weird man um and i'm gonna try and i guess i you know i couldn't think of a better i mean i'd say an A-rig. Broke. well i don't think the wall i see the a-rig too much no i can't I mean, imagine like, that you'll be good yeah give her give her a whirl so hell i don't know what yeah. to say I'm gonna go swing the the fucking flip and stick around tomorrow. <laughs> Catch the go, ass, Hayes. you know. Catch the ass. All Catch right. Me. Well, it's been been another glorious segment with Hayes. Thank you for joining us, sir. And, and please uh, follow Hayes night. on Instagram. Follow Hayes on Instagram. Hayes Baldwin. If you'd like to book a trip with him, reach out to him via Instagram. <laughs> he guides not only on Vermilion. He guides around the metro in the spring, fall. He do some specialty winter trips. If you and some loved ones like to get out and party with Hayes and and ladies out there, especially. You, you know, young and old, beautiful mothers, single mothers, <laughs> gorgeous single mothers. Um, he's open, so shoot him, shoot him a message on Instagram. Slide those please. DMs. Yeah, Slide. Hayes Baldwin Slide. Instagram. All right, see Thanks, you, Hazer. Dude. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Good. Thanks, bud. Tees. All right, oh. that was another great segment with Hayes. Always beautiful. a great time. Always a great time with Hayes. Incredible. Like you just can't. You just feel like when he's, especially when him and Will are together. Like, how do you just? How to even follow that up? You can't. Yeah, I'm wondering if Will finally got kicked out of his parking area. That that could have been what happened. Either that or his just... phone died. Yep, could have been. Uh, well, that's why he turned his truck on, but maybe he had to turn it off because of uh, 
trying to stay stealthy. I don't but, know, man. Maybe he just the barn was calling. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now we will roll into uh, our next segment. Let's do a little bit of what in the world is going on. Does everybody have something they want to chat about here? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, maybe not. Mine might. Pink not be you, or so you want to reel or pink? Go you want to go? Yeah, first? go ahead. Go ahead. So, um, I feel like Adam was maybe going to talk about this one too, but I guess I'll bring it up. What in the world's going on today? At least in the outdoor world, um, we'll go. The open schedule was released, and for any of you Midwest folks that have been paying attention to that, there's there's two that are really close to the upper Midwest. One being on Leech Lake, and one being at Lacrosse, Wisconsin, and that's that's a big deal as far as the the Bassmaster Opens goes even in back when they had you know the Northern Division or the Centrals like they they never ever ever brought two way up north at least kind of central up north as far as Midwest goes and that's that's a pretty big deal. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, I uh, I was gonna bring that up. Uh, having that Division Three released as basically the Upper Midwest, I thought was awesome. Uh, there's been a lot of people talking for a while about how those Northern swings do get people up there, but they still don't necessarily fill. Um, none of the Midwest guys, I mean, guys make the trek out there, but it's 24 hours. It's just as far as Florida is. Yeah. So now like Sobe, even talking about that Northern schedule, right? Division three, uh, Leech, St. Clair and Mississippi river lacrosse. Like I'm very much looking at fishing them. As long as I get in, I'm going to fish them. Um, but if you're looking at fishing all nine for a Minnesota guy, like there is, you also have, uh, there's one down in Arkansas and I'm blanking on the name of the place right now. I talked about this this morning with Panger. I can't even, why can't I remember it? And then the other one is, uh, you follow Oklahoma. So there is five of those nine are within like 11 or 12 hours right now. And then you add in Logan Martin and Alabama, which is, 14 to 15 ish like the travel for uh upper midwest or minnesota guy now is basically nothing compared to before so for yeah. for like for an upper midwest person like it's nice to see us get recognized and you're gonna see a lot of really 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 good sticks hit the opens next year because of it so do you feel um you know, when I saw this schedule come out, um, especially having kind of been through the college series where they did move tournaments around based on um, like involvement. Right. Uh, do, you, do you think the reason for shifting some of those northern tournaments is is because there are more guys in the Midwest that are doing well, that they want to showcase them on fisheries that, you know, they they tend to do better on? I think. Uh, I mean, I don't, I have no re reason of backing this up, but you've seen this with bass in the past. Like if they have guys who are doing very well and gaining a lot of popularity and they're seeing a lot of following somewhere, they're going to look into a way to go there. They've been looking at coming to Minnesota for a while because of fighter. Uh, and then you've seen a lot of other guys kind of come into the elite series now from Minnesota, uh, even Wisconsin with Schlopper and, uh, some of the other guys. But with that, yeah, I mean, Minis like our Minnesota's Bass Nation's huge uh, compared to a lot of other states, uh, especially for not being like an Alabama or a Texas or something, and so much growth in that realm. Yeah, I think they wanted to come up here, and obviously they want to experiment to see are they going to get more people showing up because it it's nice to see because there is no Toyota series up here. There's no There's no big right. tournament. So yeah. forever it's been, if we ever got anything, guys would jump into them. And I think another thing that's really helped is the Classic Bass Champions Tour, showcasing a lot of people and getting to a national scale, uh, them seeing like the Noah Schultzes and stuff like that. And yep. then uh, even even the Minnesota Bass Nation team trail, um, just an insider look, I guess, a little bit. Uh, last year when they opened Leech up to smallmouth getting weighed, that's when Bass first started looking at Leech. Like they had been talking about it a bit, but we came in with those weights and they were, they were calling basically immediately, uh, yeah. trying to figure out how to get up there and where to do it. Um, so they've been watching and yeah, that schedule is going to be awesome, especially with the Mississippi river tournament, not in like July. Right. Um, yeah. Being in, the, in mid September. Yeah. yeah. Mid September. It's going to fish big. Like well, you're going to have, you're going to be able to go back in the duckweed. You're going to right. be able to fish the main channel. You're going to be able to do everything. 
Yeah, I think I think there's like a misconception that, you know, even at the pro level that some of these like tournament bodies of water selections are like not that they're random, but that they're like strategic about just like going to fisheries when they're good. Um, but like I said, you know, like when Sam and I were, were at Stevens Point, I mean, you, you know, they literally reached out about that because there were there was a lot of good guys in the Midwest and they wanted like to showcase some of that on, on water that guys weren't driving 15 to 18 hours for, um, to kind of flip that, flip that in kind of some like home t- team favorite kind of stuff. So I, I think with the pros, maybe it's not to that level, but you know, they want to, they want to move it around to give guys a shot that maybe, you know, aren't even fishing the opens that are good you know, guys that aren't going to drive down to Oklahoma or something to do those or even Ozark, stuff like that. But I think it's going to be a cool schedule to watch. Yeah, yeah and the, I think they're also really looking into it because Bass notoriously with their open schedule tests places for Elite Series events. And with right. all, you know, the live scope conversation going on and stuff, that's not going to change. But uh, I think what they're very obviously doing is looking for a non-Great Lake to go have a smallmouth there beyond right uh, well and like the mississippi river has been an elite stop before yes but with you leech know. um like i, I kind of talked about it this morning with panger like it's not it is a live scopers paradise like live will be very beneficial there mm-hmm. but you can win it without it 100 percent. like there is a lot of fish doing a lot of different things they move a lot there it, it's a very different body of water than going to the St. Lawrence River, or Ontario, or Champlain, where you're out in 40 to 80 feet drifting around plucking them off. Uh, they just they don't do that out there, uh, to my knowledge. I mean, it could be wrong. There could be a population of them doing it. But uh, with it being so new and the recruitment, and also they're going to a venue like Leach. I mean, we even talked about it when we went there for state this year. I don't know. Like, we saw Brennan win it this year with smallmouth every day. He only weighed 14 of them. You could have obviously 15 in, in three days. Um, he only had four one day and like I was up there, I only had four, two days in a row and I was one pound out of the cut for the last day. Like getting a lot of smallmouth out there is hard. Like it's not, it's not an easy task. There's a lot of water, a lot of structure, and it's very intimidating to cover. So with that leech is a phenomenal largemouth fishery. So what you're yeah. going to get there is probably mixed bags with that type of an open field. Um, there's obviously going to be guys who are going to go all smallmouth kind of go. Well, I mean, it. you're also putting some of the best smallmouth anglers in the world on that body of water at one time. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting, honestly. Um, and I, I'm very intrigued to see how it goes down. I'm, I'm excited to be there. I, I want to be a part of it. And then, uh, I mean, like I was talking to you, Sobe, you never get, uh, like I get to go fish two opens potentially as long as I get in and I only have to drive three and a half hours to one of them and two to another. Yeah. Well, and it, it gives you a lot of like, cause you can practice and you know, more efficiently and stuff too, when you're not having to factor in like trips. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is off limits for, uh, if they keep their off limits the same, it's off limits for fishing up 30 days before until five days before the tournament. So, <laughs> Here's my question. I, I mean, Adam, you know Leech like a lot better than Ryan and I. W- where are they going to park 225 boats and trailers? So, yeah, so from what I've uh, heard, uh, Leesburg said anyways on, on a Facebook post that basically the day after Labor Day, um, they started tearing up the city parking lot, which that that's where we've always gone out of. The parking situation there is absolutely horrible. Whoever yeah. designed it, it was disgustingly bad. But there's a huge open area of grass and like there's tennis courts there that literally are never used and stuff like that. So I'm sure they're going to make that a really big ramp now that'll be able to host probably, you know, 80 to 100. But we had Bass Nation State there and we that was 100 boats and that was uh, not a huge problem. The biggest problem, honestly, is going to be practice because like getting 200 boats out there for practice is going to be legitimately difficult. But I know since Leech Lake and like the Walker tourism, all of them are working with them on it. They're going to have a plan. Like Bass doesn't show up somewhere and be like, oh, go figure it out. Um, So they'll have a plan for it. The biggest thing I'm going to be intrigued by, and I mean, I've told guys down south this, is they've experienced wind on the Great Lakes. 
and Champlain and stuff where they roll and they get really big. Leech is unlike anything I've ever experienced. And that's basically what everybody says who's gotten there. Um, that place eats people like it, it eats boats. And if it blows over 20 one day out there, I'm going to be very intrigued to see what happens because like, like I know what I'm going to do. Um, but I, I'm intrigued to see what the whole field does. Cause that that's the only body of water I've ever been on in a boat that I've gotten scared. Like that, that place gets legitimately scary uh, when it gets Dang. really hauling. Just the waves are short, dude. There's no troughs. Um, so like when you're getting eaten, you're getting eaten and it, it hurts. Dang. That'd so, be so cool. Yeah. It's going to be really, I think it, the thing I'm super pumped for, dude, is like that tournament is, I think it's like August 18th or something like that. It's like middle of August. And then the lacrosse one is the second or third weekend of September. There's going to be a bunch of guys who drive all the way up here who just stay up here for like a month, probably. So there's yeah. going to be a lot of guys just kind of bouncing around, hanging out in Minnesota. Um, I think that'll be pretty cool. Like there's, there's a lot of really good fishing. There's some good tournaments that time of year that they can jump into and fish other stuff. It's, it's going to be sweet. It's going to be cool to see like Minnesota and Wisconsin. I mean, lacrosse, obviously it's Wisconsin, but you, you get a good amount of Minnesota people that go down there and watch it. It's going to be cool to have like this area be front and center for the opens uh, towards the end of the year next year. Yeah. Well, and like you said, with the river, I mean, being that the elites have been there before um, and, you know, the, every time they do, it's a pretty big like local event, too. There's a, a pretty big bass fishing tournament community around like the lacrosse area and, you know, even yeah. down to like the pools by Prairie du Chien and stuff. There's a lot of good guys down there, a lot of fans of the sport. So it could be, you know, a pretty big event to go down and at least check out because I, I didn't go when they were up here last time, but it would have been fun. I mean, that's an awesome fishery. and. Uh, we'll see. I mean, hopefully going into next year, we get some rain too, and the river will be up a little bit and things will be cranking. I'm intrigued to see how many of the Northern Minnesota crowd shows up for it. Um, for the lacrosse I mean, event? Like, well, I'm saying for leech, um, oh, yeah. like for even weigh-ins and stuff like, dude, those weigh-ins are going to be insane. There's I think be it'll so be popular people there. I'm intrigued oh, yeah. to see how many of those guys, um, cause they're going to try to just hop into that one. It's going to depend how many people back out but I have a feeling you're going to need to fish all three in order to get into that one. So sure. I guess we'll see, but yeah. So but that, if the, if the crowd gonna... shows out, I think that'll look really good for, you know, that fishery for like bass to look at as an elite stop, you know, if there's oh, a good yeah. crowd and everything. And well, and then they can start looking around to like your vermilion and other places that are up here. But well, and the... you know, you've been there like leech will probably fish pretty big. So like it, it can eat up all those guys and not everyone will be on top of each other. Like some, yeah, as long places. as the wind doesn't blow. The one weird thing about leech though, is, is since there's, like Malax, right? There's nothing in the middle. So like when you drive across it, like you just go to your side of the lake, maybe you run into a few boats. There's structure all over Leech. So it kind of feels more crowded. Um sure. even though it's not, just because you can always see people. But like they're on a reef six miles from you. It's just you can see them. Um, so it, it's just it's different. But that lacrosse event's gonna be awesome. Uh if people don't remember, that's they tend to go there in the summer this or like towards the end of August. This will be the first one there in September when fighter almost won with those small mouth. That was, that sure. was middle to end of September. So yeah. that's, and it fishes really good early, like early in the year and late in the year. Yeah. So yeah, it'll it be should be an absolute blowout. Like people are going to catch them heavy. Oh, for sure. Uh, but yeah, no, kind of, I guess, so that leads into the other thing I was going to talk about what in the world is going on. Um, Easton father Gill just won the college bracket. So if yeah. you guys don't know about that, I mean, well, you know, from college fishing, obviously to make the classic, you get opens, you get a truck, you get a boat. Um, so well, Easton let's, break Father this down quick. let's break this down quick before you get into the story. So if you make it to the Bassmaster college championship, the teams that win, then all compete head to head. It's all team tournaments up until that point. Yep. Yep. Then they take, then they take a, is it eight or, or is it uh 16? It's it's, I think eight. it's eight. It's eight. eight. So, so they take they talk take the top three teams from the national championship now, and the yep. team that wins team of the year gets an automatic berth. That's right. how Easton right. and Nick You're got right. in. So then, um, so then it becomes a singles event, 
and everyone, even the partners that were just fishing as a team now compete head to head against each other uh, in like one day events, basically. Yep. And now the way they do it compared to when we were in college is um, they have the national championship. Then they have about a month break. Right. And then they take the bracket to a completely different body of water and do it. I think that's way better. Yeah. It used um, to be literally the next day. Yeah. Or they yeah, gave them, I think, day. one day of practice and then and then it was immediately after on a completely destroyed fishery. Um, so now that they do that, but yeah, so it, for piece of, people who don't know Easton, so he goes to Montevallo now down in Alabama, but he's, he was a high school hammer up in Grand Rapids, um, and then kind of went down there, but he's been fishing around the team scene for a while with his dad, Gordon. Uh, they have taken my money quite a bit on the team trail already. Like generally, if there's a big water, small mouth event, um, they're probably going to win or they're top three. Like they, they normally win, to be honest. Um, they won back to back ones this year, but yeah, Easton goes down to, they were in Kansas. I can't remember the name of the reservoir, but he just ended up winning it. And w- what's super crazy is, is right after the national championship a month ago, he ended up going into the ER. He had a brain abscess and he had brain really? surgery. Yeah. He had emergency brain surgery and was uh in hospitalized and yeah everything um so he had just gotten back into a boat and doing this he didn't know if he was even going to be able to fish so getting to show up to the bracket and do it is awesome and easton's great 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 dude and unbelievable fisherman his dad gordon's unbelievable as well but seeing him win it it's super cool for the you know the when we're talking about the northern guys showing up and more things happening there's another yeah. one Easton Fothergill just did it. Yeah. And, wow. and you know, this was, I, I did have an opportunity to watch some of the live coverage today of the event um, on Milford, Milford Lake is where this was going That's down. Was. Yes. And uh, I, I don't really know anything about that. I don't think it's a very frequented fishery by any tournament series, but uh, the weights were extremely low. It looked like a pretty tough event. I mean, there were some fish catches, but a lot of small fish. Um, and I, I think that's actually an awesome kind of, place to do a bracket like this um versus somewhere where i mean yeah granted it'd be a grinder watch to slug fest but you know to put these guys out there and they're just struggling to get a two pounder you know because you know you see a three or four pounder change the game basically and and it, and it was i think the the final weight came down to about a, a pound and a half two pound deficit um and yeah just kind of a cool way to end it and i don't know if any either of you guys watch the ending there but uh oh yeah i watched the whole last two hours I I was okay. like, oh I my god so, i think he's so, gonna do it yeah so i mean it was a catch weight release style but it was a five fish limit um and you know going into the final the final few minutes there uh the competitors were not aware of each other's weight though so it wasn't like a live leaderboard for them so at the end you know you he, he wanted, he had like 11 something and the other guy, uh, uh, fit Fisher. What was, who's the other guy? Tucker Smith. T- T- oh, Tucker Smith. Yeah. So he, uh, you know, he had like nine something. Um, but it was great. They kind of got the, they kind of, you know, in, did some interviews and stuff and neither guy knew who won at that point. Um, so they were able to kind of get some like raw emotion at the time, which is kind of cool to see. And you could tell how much, how much both of these guys wanted it. And, uh, I didn't realize that Tucker Smith actually finished second in the bracket. Uh, I think last year as yeah, well. He did. So Tucker, uh, Tucker's an absolute stud to, to go back to back second places. Is, I is hell of an accomplishment, but still it's got to sting a little bit being that close twice yeah. to, uh, you know, being in the classic, but yeah, it was, it was cool to watch. I, di- I didn't watch the previous two days. I don't know if there was live coverage or not, but, um, it looked yeah, there like was a lot live. of those Montevallo guys were in it. I mean, it was like, they had like the majority of the field was their, their school. So yeah, there, there was live coverage all weekend. I mean, it was on FS one over the Sweet. weekend. That's like so it's, it's so cool to see kind of where coming so far, man. getting to it. Really like, did is. you see they had a, they have a combine now? Yeah. Un- yeah. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. It's crazy. But yeah, as Sobe, I kind of I, I thought of that because you were bringing up the opens, and the funny thing is that one on Leech, odds-on favorite to win that tournament is Easton Fothergill. Yeah, like without a, without a doubt, which I mean, would he, be an awesome kickoff to his career as a pro, right? It would be super. I mean, I, I want to win it. I I would like to go to a classic, but uh, when we were there this summer, he weighed in twenty three, and it was blowing twenty seven. 
Wow. And I will never forget it in my life. I was on the windy side of the lake and there's like six to eights, whatever they are, just crazy big waves you're getting swallowed by. And I pulled the trolling motor up and I'm like, we got to get out of here. It's not like I would stay and fish here, but the bite is not happening and I need to get somewhere where I can move a little bit more. And I go to start leaving that side and I'm picking my track, figuring out how I'm going to dip and dive through the waves and uh, not sink. And sure as shit, I come around a little bit of a corner and Easton and his dad are coming to the windy side. Wow. They're coming that way. It's surfing them, just coming in. And I was like, oh, my God. And I get in and I'm like, if they have it and they did and they want it. And I was like, that's just gangster shit, man. There was yeah. nobody on that side of the lake. Nobody. And they're just coasting around, just not a care in the world. And it's a lot easier to do that when you are catching them. Like when you got a good bag and you're like, okay, hey, we'll just keep coasting. But yeah, major props to Easton. Kid deserves it. It's awesome to see. Pink, what do you got going on in the world? So uh scandal has struck the fishing world once again. Oh God, here we are. And, uh, you know, we're coming off of, uh, you know, multiple walleye drama scandals, you know, in, in the past, you know, six months here. And uh, not only was this a tournament scandal, but also in an event I would have never, never suspected. Uh, the, the latest drama to hit the tournament fishing scene hit the uh, prestige of the top 50 pike series oh no <laughs> way what and uh this is this is ontario's own uh uh this is this is kind of the the pinnacle some would say of the of the pike fishing community um and uh basically things are things are happening uh it's kind of being spread around the fishing world here so keep your eyes peeled for more news on this but uh this just happened this past week in ontario uh, during the top 50 classic, um, wow team here, uh, basically what, what, what sounds like happening in most tournaments, people talk about, you know, adding weight to fish, trying to make their fish bigger. In this case, it was a situation of making their fish smaller that got them into hot water here, boys. Oh, I remember seeing this. Really? Now. Yeah. So, I see yeah. This. I so did what, see this. what was occurring is, uh, is the tournament the tournament rules state that your your five fish limit must be under 24 inches and uh with it being sort of a slot limit type situation there was a a, a scandal involving trimming of the tails on northern pike to be oh. legal to be weighed in now uh i'm not gonna say that if you're gonna cheat you should be good at cheating but i did see the photos uh that accompanied this scandal and um the scissors were sharp. Have, have, have you seen, you've seen a pike's tail. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Um, now these were trimmed to, to, to resemble more of like a Cisco, if you will, <laughs> uh, you know, very forked tail, sharp, clean edges. Um, you know, they got the fiskers out really to, to just, just, just take a little off the top. Um, I honestly was impressed that they were actually kept. I mean, these fish had to have been within a half an inch of being legal size. And, uh, they just, they just felt the need to go for it here. Um, and you know, the, the articles that are out there now are still, uh, even though they're about this pike, this pike tournament, they're still burning these walleye guys to the ground for the majority of the article. And then they go into and then they're like, like, Oh, by the way, these guys took yeah. a pair of kitchen scissors to these pike tails. Yeah. Now, and the, the interesting thing that I saw here was that um, because they were involved in, I, I believe this was the winning team as well, or maybe someone that placed pretty high in the uh, in the in this tournament that they typically do a polygraph test after they win these events has yet to be conducted. So everyone's waiting anxiously to see the results of the polygraph test that uh, go along with this tournament. So that this is this is real i mean just happened this week so uh they're looking at let's see according to what, what was the winning purse for this this tournament uh i i don't oh, know actually I, i'll i'll find out right now let, let me just take okay. a look here uh, well while well, ryan looks that up i, I want to say this goes back more to those walleye guys that you know cheated by putting those big egg sinkers in there 
I really, 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 I, was, I don't know who I was talking about with the other day, but I really want to see like a well done documentary 30 for 30 on those guys, like, you know, five years from now or 10 years from now when they're really going to spill all the beans, like how many years they were doing this and, and everything who mm -hmm. got them into it. They're like, like a deep dive 30 for how 30. Long? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not just those two, but like the partners they fished with and their buddies, who do they all tell who knew about this? Like, who all knew about this or was mum the word and just those two dudes knew like i just want a full deep dive 30 for 30 because that would be the most watched freaking fishing deal in the whole world oh it would it would break the internet twice you found uh, it yet pink i i did i did so so the this this was the i i believe the championship of the uh classic pike or classic 50 is a ten thousand uh, dollar winning yeah. takeaway big purse uh, lake nipissing is where this went down it was just just about uh it was at the beginning of september or uh i'm sorry yeah beginning of september so uh this news is just starting to circulate now it sounds like two teams are caught up in this scandal of potential trimming of fish fins so wow. it'll be interesting to see how it plays out there this is all allegations at this point nothing has been uh proved um, but that's, that's, what's out there. So again, I don't know if, you know, these are things that are just coming about now, or if people are starting to pay more attention just because it's been in the news more, but we're starting to see a few more of these scandals popping up here and there. So who knows boys? Jeez. You can't get away with it. Just stop doing it. No, just don't. Be the game. Yeah. Just don't. Yeah, for sure. All righty. Well, good, good little segment there of diving on what's going on in the world. I think uh, next, what we'll dive into real quick. Pink, do you have a twisted fork ready? I do. I do. I can keep it Ooh. short though. Um, so th this one what, is what uh, is a segment for people who are people new. We got yeah. new people from AP. So if somehow yeah. they've lasted through that haze trivia, you guys are OG <laughs> ones. You're real. Yeah. You're the best. You were meant Thank to you. be here. If you're still here, you're meant for us. Um, so yeah, the twisted fork. Uh, this is a segment that came about uh, s several months ago now. Uh, just kind of re recounting some uh, cooking expeditions on some less than uh, less than popular meals in the outdoor world. So I think previously, uh, you know, we took a look at some some ways to uh, eat iguana meat. Uh, I think we did some salmon heads previously. Uh, I, I'm maybe failing to to recall some of these here. But uh, yeah, at some point, we'll maybe we'll put out a list of the things that we've we've gone down on the twisted fork scene. But cool. uh, the goal is to basically go through the year uh, find some curate, some, uh, some different wild meats that maybe people aren't as, uh, keen on and we'll prepare them in a interesting way. So, uh, this week, uh, like I said, I'll keep this one short. This one isn't going to go super, super in depth here, but this is a species that I think gets a bad rap. Uh, it's, this is the time Ooh. of year when, when it, it, it is potentially prime time to acquire this meat source. Um, and you know, I've been, I've been fortunate to say that I, uh, I've been on the receiving end of a lot of this. I've harvested my own many a time and, uh, look forward to doing some more of this week actually. So this, this, uh, I'm just going to get into it. We're talking about the coot. Oh, Here we go. I, I thought like you were gonna. That. I thought you were gonna go with snapping Dude, turtle or something I, like I, that. I, random side topic, but I'm yeah. probably gonna smash a bunch of them accidentally on the Mississippi River at tournament takeoff because it is so hard to avoid them. Live well. one seventy on the Mississippi well. River in the fall. It yeah. is so hard because they so, are not fast. They're not, and and they're they're plentiful. You know, I you know this is not a lot of people hunt them specifically. Uh, you know, I, I think there is a small community of people that take great pride in, uh, you know, <laughs> shooting straps of coot. Um, but yeah, the, the moor hen is a underappreciated species. Uh, very good to eat. I know they've, they've been kicked around as kind of like a, a mud nuts, duck. yeah, mu yeah, a mud, mud duck. duck, you know, people feeding them to their dog kind of thing, leaving them in the marsh. But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, they are well worth the effort to uh to hunt to get the meat from and i use them in a lot of things that i've been making 
Um, oh. And it can uh, it can actually pad the stats a little bit, given that the limit on uh, ducks may only be six in the state that you're hunting. In a lot of states, the uh, daily limit on coot, for those that wouldn't know, would be actually 15 birds. Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? Per is, person per is, day. Is that in Minnesota as well? It is. It is. <laughs> So, you know, for, for folks out there that, that, you know, do a little wing shooting here and there. Now I will say, you're not going to shoot a lot of these on the wing. This is a pond swatters paradise is what, what the coot scene is. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate to have them, you know, been strategic about, you know, harvesting quite a few of these and, uh, you know, letting them swim into the decoys in in large numbers can be very beneficial to someone looking to fill their limit for the day. Um, but <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say that, you know, as far as like meat, you know, they have about as much meat on them as as like a teal. So, you know, if yeah. you're if you're into shooting teal, you you know, you're looking at about that that quantity there. Um super dark meat, even like darker than I think that's why a lot of people might say, "Oh, they're not that good to eat." Um, but, you know, in in a lot of the things that I make, I've been using them especially uh in kind of addition to duck meat, doing things like different types of sausage. Uh, coot burgers have been a staple on my menu the past few falls oh. here. And uh, they're delicious. I'm not going to lie. It's like any other waterfall, though. Sam, I know you've eaten a lot of ducks in your day. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, oh, I'm really at – go for it. I was just going to say, I mean, an, an overcooked duck, not that great. Not that great. No, same, same with the coot. I mean, you know, it, it's it's good meat, but, you know, it needs to be prepared properly. Now, I've talked to people where I, I actually made it for other people uh, who I think reluctantly tried it and did enjoy it. But, you know, by by making it into like a dish, something that's actually good, you know, their response typically is, well, you, you could cook anything with, you know, seasoning on it or whatever. Uh, my rebuttal to that is, well, that's what cooking is, um, is you know, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's, there's probably a lot of things that if you just, if you just put it in a, in the microwave and, and eat it, it's probably not going to be that good. So, um, it's worth a shot. Like I said, if you, if you like to shoot birds, uh, especially on a trip, like, like I said, I'm going to North Dakota, you're looking to load up, maybe do some cool stuff with some waterfall and you can only shoot, you know, six ducks a day, maybe get into the geese, pad your stats a bit, but being able to shoot 15 coup a day. Yeah. Bring another case of ammo boys. And I'm, and I'm really glad you brought this up just because like, this is, oh my gosh, I, I'm back in high school. I duck hunted quite a bit, but I haven't in recent years. And back when we were in high school, like, you know, even though the internet was readily available, like people just didn't go on it. You didn't like Google things as much. You know what I mean? You didn't just like watch recipes on YouTube or you didn't Google stuff. You know what I mean? It was still almost like the wild west of, of outdoor cooking times where you just like whatever you got, you kind of just like played with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And my small group of boys that used to go with, there's like four of us, we would piss throttle coots so hard and we would clean them and we would eat them. And then we would tell no one about it. Yeah. And we always kind of like, like looked at each other. Like we're not going to tell anyone we did this, but dude, th not that bad. And we used to shoot a lot of teal and we used to shoot a lot of, henwood ducks and drakewood ducks <laughs> and i thought they tasted just the same i thought they tasted great and and it was i would go as far to say that if you if you prepared them side by side yeah. the same way that you would be hard pressed to tell the difference yeah and it was just one of those things we did and we never spoke about and for you to say you have been <laughs> making a lot of them and they are good that makes me feel so good yeah and, 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 less and, ashamed. and, and i may be understating it when i'm saying a lot i i mean i i don't know if if you're really grasping the gravity of the coot situation that I'm in, um, <laughs> that, I mean, I, they don't, they don't typically make it out of my decoy spread alive is what I'm saying. Yep. yep. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So anyway, I, like I said, I, I plan on, uh, doing a, a pretty significant coot harvest, uh, over the next week. And, uh, I would be very happy to report back, uh, potential and how that goes, but yes, Please do. But, but yeah, so I, I will say one of my favorite, and that, this is not just a coot thing, but, you know, uh, as far as waterfowl goes, um, w duck burgers are unbelievable. And like I said, coot is, I pretty much use interchangeably in these. And granted, yeah, you can make all kinds of sausage and stuff. But if you're talking one of the richest, juiciest burgers you can make. Oh. I'm telling you boys right now. I mean, we, we might have to do like a, like a pass the barb uh, dinner. And, and, you know, we might, we might dive into some of these a, a mukbang per se. We could mukbang. 
per se. That's still a thing. Yeah. You could bring <laughs> it back. We could. We could muck bang around. I like it. That's good. Well, Pink, so, you got anything else or just loving on the coot? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I just, I want to promote coot harvest nationwide. Uh, and just, you know, I, I think more people should get, should get out there and try it. And, uh, it's an under, an underappreciated species as far as, you know, a, a, a dinner bird goes. And a great way to get into duck hunting too, because I don't care oh, what yeah. swamp or slough you go into. There are always coots. They're always yeah. there. Yeah, There's, they're e- easy to come by. Yeah. That's... And like I said, 15 a day. Come on. <laughs> there you go. No, that's a good one. All righty. That is uh, Twisted Fork. And I think probably to end the night, we're going to roll into a weigh-in segment. Um, oh. For people who don't know of the weigh-in, the weigh-in is a segment where we uh, pick a topic. We pick the best uh, in a snake draft order. We pick our best team, post the roster on social media. You guys vote for the best thing. We have done things from the worst type of anglers to uh, best round things to, I mean, just like best traditions of sorts. And this one will be a good one. And I feel like I am at an ex- extreme disadvantage, but we're, we're going to wing it. and We're going to try to have fun. This week's is the weigh-in of hunt, hunting camp transition. Wow. Wow. The weigh-in of Let's hunting camp traditions. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Duck camp, bow camp, deer camp, hunting camp traditions. And this is, if you, I don't care if you're from Florida all the way to Canada, everybody who does any sort of hunting has a deer camp, hunting camp tradition or story, even if you've only been yeah. one. And I am going to, if you buy me a hair of time, I'm going to look up the results from the last one. Yeah. So Sam, uh, I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the past several years, you've been doing a bit of a, a deer camp. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, at, at, at your house, it, it looks like, is that correct? Yeah. Some at my house, kind of my parents' house, just kind of just trying to, I'm trying to just start traditions and dabble in both. Like I'm just trying to harbor longstanding traditions as far yeah, as I, deer camp goes. And I, I love that because like, you know, when I first started hunting, like we kind of did that uh, being that, you know, my family primarily lives in Wisconsin um, and we don't, we, you know, me and my dad, we don't go back to, to hunt as much yeah. now as we did previously. So I kind of miss that, you know, we kind of just do our own thing now and, you know, we do a lot of other, other hunts where we travel now, but that whole like deer camp scene, I feel is like something that I'm, I'm definitely missing. And I need Dude, to like this year, involved. this year, this year, you're, you're yeah. coming, whether it be my house or my parents' house and whether it be after someone kills or if it's yep. the night before, like, dude, you're coming and your dad is welcome to come. Adam, you are welcome to come. Like, It's there has been people like Andrew Ozowski that has shown up and, I've yeah, been there. and he, yeah, Adam's been there. Adam, like you don't have to hunt to enjoy deer camp traditions. In fact, right. if, if you're not hunting, you're probably in the best position out of yeah. anyone else there <laughs> well like it's just it, it's kind of like the best of both worlds right like you're getting this this kind of like uh nostalgic feel but you're yeah. still kind of you know i i miss that like i said growing up I, we had a hell of a deer camp you know in, in wisconsin and, and we just don't really do that anymore but anyway you, you want to get into this thing yeah, yeah so looking i was looking at the last results and um, we're going to go based off of them because I feel like that's what we've said we were going to do. And yeah. we're actually starting to get a lot of people um, voting, voting like a yeah. lot. And which uh, is fantastic. That yeah, is good. That's, that's a whole goal of this. So comment on social media. And the biggest thing is vote because we go off the polls, not necessarily your comments. So going off the polls, we got uh, best round things. Bart with the W. Oh, you got the dub. I had 48% of the votes on Instagram and 46% of the votes on the uh, Spotify. That's the dub. I got the dub. Got second, second up will be Sobe, who got 38% of the votes on both. And bringing up the rear will be Pink, who got 14% on both. Stand strong here, Pink. This is your week. This is my week, but I, I will say I, I think we all collectively put up a big L on that last one so yeah we did i, I um, thought it was great i finally won 
All right, weighing in. All right. So, so you're leading uh, us off there? Or, or yeah, that? hunting hunting camp tradition. So I'm going to lead it off in one that I've actually been a part of and experienced, and it's been at Sobeys. And I will say the number one will be uh, cooking the deer heart after you harvest one. Yes, that's a good one. That is a good oh. one. Oh, man. I, I'm so pumped that you've been over. for Adam, you, you got to come over this year. You're literally right, you're right by us. You're coming over. And Ryan, too, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Cooking the deer heart. That's a really good one. All right. Uh, now I'm out. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how, how are we doing this? So, are we going Sobe, one, two, three? Sobe, or? Yep. Sobe's okay. next. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to go cribbage slash card games because every Ooh. good deer camp has their game, whether it be euchre, whether it be 500. Do you cribbage. want card games or cribbage? I want cribbage slash card games. Oof feel like you got to pick there. Get, I, just, no one else will take cribbage from you, but you got to have the. Okay. We'll go, card, the, we'll go We'll go cribbage. We'll go cribbage. 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 That's a, that, that's at least a longstanding tradition in our deer right. camp of just, okay. just throwing cards heavy. 15, two, 15, four, all the way to fourth street, all the way to home. Love it. Um, Pink, you got back to back. Okay. I'm going to lead off with what I believe is a very strong one. Uh, I think this will resonate with a lot of people. Now, it depends kind of which type of deer camp you have, but this one was was definitely a staple for us, was just making an uncomfortably large pot of chili. Oh, yum. That What, what should I write that down as? Large pot of chili? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, like, th this is, like, something that's sitting out on the – on the patio on the grill you know yeah. for the whole the whole week you know it's yeah. out it's frozen eat it, it when you're ready you know wisconsin mm -hmm. deer camp end of november time frame you know it stays it stays cold out there but you know someone's always revving one up in the microwave getting things rowdy loved it absolute stable okay i'm um, backing back it up so this one, I'm going to, I'm pumping this one because we've talked about it on this podcast before. It has become a tradition for me uh, in recent years, and everyone should be doing this. If you're in a deer camp, you should be listening to the Deer Hunters Roundup. It is the most unbelievable radio show that takes place during deer season. And it <laughs> is a must listen to event that comes once a year. <laughs> I hope I you, you I hope you win it last year. I hope you win this way in <laughs> literally because of that. Ryan, you have brought this to my attention, I think, the past two years. And it's almost this is crazy for how awesome it is. It's almost like it leaves my brain and I I don't remember that it's a thing on planet Earth. And then you bring it up to me like at the beginning of every November, and I'm like, oh, oh yes, this is it's incredible. So Ryan, good. tell tell exactly what it is and what it's, it's so about. So good. So this is a, a radio station out of uh, northern Wisconsin that broadcasts this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up just so I remember the the radio station number. Um, but essentially, what this is. Uh, all right, hold on one second. Hunters round. Okay, um, it's a it's a radio show that spans the entire Wisconsin deer season. So it kind of comes around towards the mid to late November time frame, and. Uh, Essentially, it is a radio show that goes on for hours every night of the whole season, and each deer camp actually calls in live to the show, uh, no matter how many bush lattes they've gotten into in camp that night. Everyone calls in with the name of their deer camp and kind of gives an update as far as how things are going, and uh, it's nothing but pure comedy as far as I'm concerned. It is exactly what you want it to be in yeah. everything that you could ever hope for. It wow. is, uh, it's hard to really even describe what all is involved here, but it, it's from 98 Q country. Uh, it's so uh, yeah. 98.3 is the radio station out of park falls. And it is, I'm telling you right now, if you like the outdoors, if you like hunting, if you like listening to funny shit, this is, this is for you. It, you I mean, you don't even have to like hunting to like this. I, I you don't promise it is, you. It is literally a comedy show and it is, it is very real. Like this is not like a state. It, it's just drunk people pretty much calling in, talking about, 
you know, what's going on in deer camp. And these are, these are deer camps across Minnesota or Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan that are calling into this station. And, you know, all of these like traditions we're talking about, it's like all of that is happening while these people are calling in and talking about Jimmy's four pointer that he shot last night. And, you know, little Timmy's Timmy's buck got eaten by a wolf last night and they're hot on the trail. You know, it's just unbelievable. I think last year, the highlight of my deer hunters roundup was listening to, to some, some Ron or whatever shit in his hood and his, in his fucking one piece deer suit. <laughs> like it was just unbelievable, you know? So anyway, put that on your list for this, this deer season, listen to the deer hunters roundup. Whoever started that that is that is now made my life and it's been going for a long yeah. time that's my life bucket list now to shake the man's hand who decided hey we're gonna make this a, a november long radio station oh god section now, or or I, just a, what they i think need you they need Sam, all the stakes yeah and i think now i'm gonna challenge you to this as part of this this way and but uh i think you need to come up with a deer camp name that you can call in to the deer hunters roundup with this year archie archie uh hello this is archie just giving you a call camp in archie you need a name, you need a name for your camp because that's how oh. you that's how you call in is you say <sighs> camp such and such calling in and you then you provide your update i I'm, let me think on that i'll i'll return there are some rugged ones time. out there i'm not gonna lie <laughs> All right, Soby, what's your number two? Uh, I'm I'm gonna say staying up till two a.m. I feel like every deer camp, especially opening weekend, is just it is <laughs> it's not a tradition. It's not like people set in stone like we're gonna follow it, but everyone does, and they all stay up way too late, and they just they're hurting going to the stand the next morning. Staying up till two a.m. opening morning. It's a good one. That, that happens. That happens at every camp. I'll put a kidney on it. Um, that <laughs> that goes kind of along with the one I'm going to take, but uh, I'm going to take uh the guy who drinks a case of beer before opening morning. Everybody knows that guy. Everybody has that uncle. Everybody has that friend. <laughs> got him. His name is Cody Honor. <laughs> Oh, and I think while while we're in the midst of this, we we should say Cody Hunter's not here, but he is actively on a deer hunt as we speak. And he will Hunter will be back for the foreseeable future, from what I understand, starting next podcast. He's really? out of the work realm. Yeah. Yeah, I think really? he'll be back. But That's he's awesome. hot on hot on the trail of a muley buck in Wyoming. And Cody, Cody is like and his family, they are purebred Wisconsinites. Like Wisconsin yeah. really harbors the full cultural effect that goes along with deer camp and and cody is right in the center punch of it he's gonna have stories <laughs> yes all right and then for my back to back um this one probably is gonna seem a little basic but i think it i think it rains very true and it's a good pick is um one of the best hunting camp traditions is talking about hunting camp that's what I've gathered because <laughs> people fucking love talking about hunting camp. Like you get back and it's all they talk about. They don't even talk about their hunt. They just talk about yeah. hunting camp. <laughs> no, they might've not seen anything. There's definitely camps out there that blank. I'm not talking blank killing stuff. Blanks even seeing deer, but they got stories and they are the best stories from, from deer camp. There are a lot of good ones. Like I, right. I love hearing other people's it's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I always love hearing them, but it's one thing like people always talk about their traditions. I'm like, I don't know. Like, cause it's such a definite one time a year thing. People yeah. talk about it all year. Like it can be February yeah. and they're just talking about their hunting camp. Adam, so, don't you want to, don't you like want to start this tradition as far as like it goes in fishing? Like, don't you want to start like the day before opener, like do opener camp or something like that? Like what? Can't there yeah, be a place I for that? I mean, you could. I, I think what we need to bring back, I mean, it is in hunting season, but we, when we did that one late fall trip with all the guys, dude, that was a blast. That was, because, that was just like, dude, that was Smalley Camp. Yeah. It was. I yeah. think any, because, any like collective you fish group from like, like nine, that. Yeah, because you fish yeah. from like 9 to 5.30 or 6, get back and hang out with the boys forever, and then you don't have to get up early for that time of year bass fishing because like they don't eat in the morning. They're cold. That was a true. Um, that was a true purebred fish camp. Yeah, doing it late but, in October. Like all right, Soby, you're up for number three. 
I'm, and maybe this might not win me it, but this is just probably particular to me. I'm going to go homemade chicken wild rice soup. My mom makes some incredible homemade chicken wild rice soup, and it has been, it's probably a tenured staple at our deer camp. It, it's That's just a great delicious. Pick. It, it's tenured. I, I bet Adam's eating it. I bet half the freaking community is eating it. I have. That's it's very good now. soup. It is good soup. Yes, that's, that's a great eat, pick. Eat your soup, Billy. It's good soup. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pink. All right. So I got back to back here to seal my victory. Is that how this goes? Yep. All right. So I'm I'm taking this as my three because I feel like I have a really good four. And uh, my third deer camp tradition is listening to this song right here. And I'll play a little snippet right here. I was freezing to death. And it started to snow, so I got down from the feast and started heading for the truck. And that's when I seen it there. The 30-point buck. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to the 30-point the buck is is non-negotiable for me. And, how, do, uh, how do you spell that? Uh, it's D-A space 30-point buck. <laughs> is that T T I? It would be T-U-R-D-Y. I think that's important. It is. It is. So if if you're if you're not uh, a a well versed in the the thirty point buck song, make it part of your arsenal. It's deadly. And I'll I'll, I'll give you another five seconds here since we're we're on the topic. He was so wonderful, so beautiful. Strutted right out of my dreams. He was created by God. It's for outdoor magazines. <laughs> oh, I don't do it often, but I had an idea. Oh. All right. So I won't ruin it for you, but listening to it, it's well worth it. That's a, that's a phenomenal that's song. All right. And All right, then, uh, bring her home. My last one would be uh, the late night drag. Coming back oh. to the cabin or the house and getting all the boys together after you shot one, you know, right before closing and taking the yeah. whole squad out there to go blood trail in this thing. Yeah. That was always like my favorite thing, especially when I was a kid. Like my dad would come back to the cabin and everything. And like he knew, like even when he, he knew he smashed one, like he'd come back and get everybody and be like, let's go find this thing. And it was always like a big deal. So the, the late night drag, a lot of fond memories there. That's, That's a good awesome. One. Yeah. So we kind of like this kind of builds off in college, but late night beers around dead animals. Like when you got them hanging in somebody's garage or shed or outside their cabin's tree, there is nothing better than everyone is standing around when somebody scored and you just, you just reminisce and not might not even be on that animal. That's actually hanging there, but it's just like, Late night beers around dead animals, or just you no, can write beers. No, this, dead I'm gonna help you here because I think there's a you should you should say beers around the buck pole. Beers around the buck pole. Yeah, because that one's gonna that one's gonna hit. <laughs> beers around the buck pole. Yeah, that's good. Yep, that's a good one. All right, and I'm gonna bring her home. Um, and I think I'm actually I feel like. I'm surprised this one wasn't taken, to be honest, because I feel like this is a steal at four. Um, it's from everything I've ever seen, because I've been with Sobe or Brock or Steph at times for this. It's the phone call. Oh, the, the BBD. Yeah, oh, it's the phone gosh. call. Like, that's the really number is. one. Like, that's when, like, because, like, you hear someone freaking out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like your heart just like all of a sudden's like boom, 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 boom. Like you get second hand. Yeah. I think it's the phone call. That's good. A, a That's really good. good, a really good one is when, when Adam and I were filming the one and we are just fishing in frigid cold temperatures. And like literally the day before Adam calls me and he's like, I caught the biggest bass in my life. The day after Steph calls me and she killed her first archery deer. And it was just like both. And yeah, we got you, back and you, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Literally like, and if you are any fan of the outdoors or have put any time into it, when you get a phone call from a buddy or a loved one, when they 
have just scored on some something, something totally epic. You just like there's never I don't know. I've never felt more joy for somebody else than when you get the phone call of this is my biggest bass ever, or biggest fish ever, or just big musky or freaking just killed my first archery or biggest buck of my life. Or I just kill. I just killed a deer. I just scored on a deer. Like the emotions are incredible. The Adam, that's a great one. That's Boom. good. That's yeah. solid. I thought I thought that was a good one late. I'm surprised that, I got that. Wow. I'm gonna be real here. Those were the only four I had, so I'm yeah. really lucky. I think that was still good though. It, it's yeah. competitive still. It's it was not very like, good. Yeah. yeah, I think it was very good. So uh, we got we're gonna read through them all real quick. Once again, you guys can vote on social media for the winners. We got Bart with cooking, uh, cooking deer heart after the kill. Great one. To the guy who drinks a case of beer the night before opener. Three, talking about hunting camp. Four, <laughs> the kill call or the kill phone call. Yeah. Solid. Put the so kill we, phone call just so they know. Yeah, yeah, I got I got. That's what I have down. Perfect. Um, Sobe with cribbage. Staying up until 2 a.m. Homemade chicken wild rice soup. And late night beers around the buck pole. Yeah, God, that's strong. That's a good one. That's a good good list. Pink with large pot of chili. Yeah. Listening to Deer Hunters Roundup. Listening to the Dirty Point Buck. Mm. Yeah. And late night drag. Oh, late God, night that, drag is so epic. That feels dude. really good. That feels good. <laughs> yeah. Those. I feel like those are all really good lists. To be honest, that might yeah, be really the good. first. It might be one of the first ones we've done where like normally we've done them and I'm like, uh, that one's pretty weak. Uh, yeah. No offense, pink, but best round things. But uh, no, <laughs> Fuck off. But there's, there's, I, we've done one. No, there's where been like, ones where you're like, God, God I was it. not strong there. Someone yeah, you're like, yeah. oh, they dusted but us. This one, this I one's like good down to like what your deer camp is like. Yeah. yeah I think right? this Just one like, is good. Yeah. But so does anybody have any uh, honorable mentions to go through here? I have one. That I, I have to say because I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up. Yeah, bring it up, Pink. So the only got? reason I didn't pick this is because I picked the song one. And I was like, I can't do both of these. Yeah. But if you're not familiar, familiarize yourself with watching Escanaba in the Moonlight. It is <laughs> the quintessential Deer Camp movie. Unbelievable. I've never seen it. You, you must. There you go. You now must. You need to. Escanaba. Do movie. you have any honorable mentions? It's kind of like the one you said, frying up the deer heart, the loins, dude, the tenderloins. Tenderloins. Yeah. The that tenderloins, would loins like that is tenderloins with mushrooms and onions and butter. Like right. Like, cannot... like the, that night, like you come yeah. and you peel them out and oh yeah. It's like cotton candy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's, that's one thing I distinctly remember from being at your Sobe is like, you'd come back and we're always eating something immediately off of it. Yeah. And, so. and, and, and if I had to give another honorable mention, I'd just say like the crowd, you know what I mean? Like you never know at a deer camp, unless you go remote, like if you go up North and you have a specific set of family or people that come over, then it is potentially the same group, which is so cool. But I'm sure those folks meet people at small town bars too. But like it, you know, at a deer camp, different people come, different people go, different people show up this year. Other people don't show up. New faces come in. And it's just like, it's the crowd and it just, it's a moment. A moment is had. Yeah. And, and I think and when we had Honor on, I think last time or, or the one before, for whatever reason, we, th th this got brought up too, that uh, like in Wisconsin, I know this hasn't been a thing in Minnesota for a long time, I don't think, but till recently, Wisconsin always had like an in-person registration station for like big game. So like you oh. shot a deer, everyone came. There was, you know, a couple sporting goods stores or gas stations that did the registration. And it was always like a hot spot of like people just standing in the parking lot, drinking beers, looking at bucks and like that's super cool. sweet. So, that's really cool. Yeah. But stuff like that. Yeah. Deer camps are unreal, dude. Unreal. Yeah. No, that, that was a very good one. I think that was very good. But yeah, I mean, other than that, boys, we're rolling into October. It is, I mean, it's hunting season now. It is, by the time this podcast comes out, it is getting really cold. And um, I mean, 
I don't know if it's first, good first news goal or, front of the year, right? I mean, yeah, and I, I don't know if it's good news or bad news, but I was I was swiping through uh, social media a little bit earlier, and uh, I did see a forecast that uh, we might be getting our first flakes here in the next few weeks. Yes. It's going to get cold, yeah. and uh, it's coming. Ice is coming. Winter's coming. This yeah. this is kind of a time of year. October, you kind of get to enjoy it for a while, but like. Dude, like October 20th and stuff starts hitting and all of a sudden like it slams you in the face. You're like, holy shit, this is this is real. And I know yeah. for uh, actually all of us, we have we got clam pro night and stuff later this week. And that's kind of like the it, it used to be in the summer. But now that it's in the fall, like it used to be. I always remember that being is like you walk in there and you walk out and you're like, oh, my God, it's actually like right here. Yep. I love yeah. that it's in the fall now because you just. You, you get to see people you ice fish with. And like you said, it slams you in the face and you go, whoa. Like it's, I feel like it almost preps you better because yeah, all of a sudden does. you get slammed and you're like, oh, I got to go do this stuff. I don't know if it's going to end up staying in the fall from stuff I've been hearing, but I was really pumped it got moved. Sadly, I can't make it this year because the Jude got <laughs> rescheduled. Yeah. So that's a major bummer, but I'll be at social night with Panger. But yeah, uh, I think it'll be a good time. And like, I think there's going to be a ton of guys talking hunting at this thing though. Cause I think, that is like oh, in the yeah. air thick right now. Yeah, and, there'll be a bunch of you guys chatting, hunting. But yeah, with that said, we're rolling into October. We got Stolsky back tonight. That's exciting. Honor will be back soon. And for all you people that have been hopping on the train, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Like we said, once we get to 100 comments and subscribes on Apple Podcasts, um, yeah, we're going to do some giveaways. We have some great listeners who've given some prizes. And uh we're ready to give them away to everybody. So thank you everybody for tuning in to another episode of Pass a Barb and we will see you next time. Thank you. 